So, um, greetings everyone. Uh, this is uh, your brother, um, Ojigiwa Amudi Watchman. Sorry again, I'm really quite late, but this uh, um, um, broadcast has been necessitated by the um, promptings, I believe, uh, from God in our hearts to actually address something we believe is very crucial happening within the body of Christ. Okay, I can see some comments now from another screen. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so, um, like the like we uh, presented in ad, we'll be addressing um, a, a false teaching by a popular radio presenter uh, called uh, Daddy Freeze. Um, so before we do that, uh, nom uh, we'll pray as usual, but um, it's important you understand why this ha is also necessary, because we're not just talking about an, uh, uh, just anyhow, any kind of false teaching, like from maybe uh, Bishop Yedekbo or Suleiman or something that has to do with fishing the flock. This issue has to do with the eternal salvation of men. All right, so that is why it's very important. That's why we need to really look at it. So I can see, yeah, it's loud and clear. Your video is perfect. Go ahead. Okay, other people have said so. Sorry, I had to. Um, I'm looking at this through another uh, broadcast. So um, I will pray, brethren, um, and then I will just um, commit everything to God's hands, asking Him to take control and help us. Um, you know, with this, so that um, he can, um, the spirit as usual, can take control of our broadcast and uh, give us grace to speak, say the things we need to speak, and not go beyond boundaries. So let's just come into God's hands and pray with me, Father. In the name of Jesus, we want to bring this uh, uh, broadcast into your hands. Um, Father, we know that there is no salvation apart from Christ. We know our human efforts and our works can never save us. The only thing that can save us is grace through Christ. So, Father, as we expose these false teachings, we pray that your spirit would bring convictions to the likes of Daddy Freeze and those who he is misleading with this false doctrine of works. That you, it, Let this message not be to their condemnation, but let it bring conviction. Because, they are, because of the souls they are misleading, we pray that mercy will go forth from this message to reach out to everyone here, to teach us what it really means to have eternal life through grace alone by the blood of Jesus Christ whereby we are saved so we'll commit everybody that will be speaking here including myself, our guests the people viewing, the people who will be calling in, who want to contribute we pray that you take control may there not be a spirit of strife here, but let it be that your spirit will lead us and at the end of the day may we all be edified and learn to the glory and praise of your name and of your son Jesus Christ, Amen Amen all right. So, um, without going, without uh, wasting time, I'll just play the, a clip where uh, Daddy Freeze um, taught about eternal life. This is not the first time he's um, taught about it. I mean, he's been saying it for a very long time that um, you know all it takes for one to make heaven is to do acts of charitable deeds. You know, and um, so I want to play this clip. And I want you to um, just hear what he's, he would um, he has to say about eternal life. And I I'll be making comments, and I want you to note very well certain things he'll be saying when I pause. I want to bring this to view. Okay. Let me get myself out of the way. <laughs> I don't think it's necessary to... Uh, where are you? Where are you? Okay. All right. So uh, just listen. Listen. Today we're talking about the main message of Yahushua, which is eternal life. And um, I need you to have your scriptures ready. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, he's going to Matthew 25 to, to preach. So let's uh, just listen. Go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 25. I'm starting the message as I promised with the red scriptures because in the hierarchy of scriptures the words of the new covenant coming through Yahushua our Savior are more important than any words in the scriptures because they are our passport to the new covenant without a passport you have no entry But when the Son of Man comes in His glory, I'm reading from 31, and the angels are with Him, then He will sit upon His glorious throne. Pantatha etne. 
In Greek, that is, all the nations, everyone, will be gathered in his presence. And he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of this world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty, give you something to drink? Or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me read the Nigerian version of this. Each time you did it to the men of God, you were doing it to me. Ta for where? Then the king will turn to those on the left. Oh my goodness. Ha ha. Oh yeah, those on the left. Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire. One has eternal life, the other has eternal fire. Prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me to your home. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not help you? Remember, we paid our tithe to give offering. So why are you saying this, Lord? Lord, wait till you the yarn. Only me built in the church. My pastor last three cars. Now me buy him. Lord, wait till be this way you the yarn. <laughs> and he will answer. I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment. But the righteous into eternal life. I want to press full stop and I want to pray again. Father, I come before you with your children. Everybody gathered here and everybody listening on facebook.com forward slash cool FM Nigeria or any of the social media. People listening via the radio 96.9 cool FM. Everybody hearing this message, Father, give us the gift of eternal life. Help us to have understanding, to know how to give to you so we can get the gift of eternal life. Did you hear that? Did you notice that? Take note of that. Look at his understanding. So, he rightfully prays that God, please help us that we may have the gift of eternal life. Now, listen to what he says. Notice that, and <clears throat> interestingly, I want you to notice so when I say that the devil is using daddy freeze, I don't say that because in a spiteful way to hate him he sincerely wants to serve god he sincerely thinks he's serving god but he doesn't know the devil is using him and you get to see that with time notice that he's rightfully prayed that god give us the gift of eternal life now but he goes on to say teach us to give to you that we may learn how to get this gift of eternal life maybe maybe we, we didn't hear that well let me just let me just take note of that that he said what he said and this forms the basis of his message listen to this on facebook.com forward slash cool fm nigeria i come before you with your children now, everybody listen. gathered here and everybody listening listen on facebook.com forward slash cool fm nigeria or any of the social media people listening via the radio 96.9 cool fm everybody hearing this message father give us the gift of eternal life Help us to have understanding to know how to give to you so we can get the gift of eternal life. You heard that? You heard that? Very important. Nothing about help us to believe in Christ, help us to accept his salvific work, help us to believe as Christ has said we should believe through grace that we may have salvation through the blood of Christ. Nothing about that. And something you're going to notice about this, brethren, is that what is so sneaky about that Ephesians message is that there's hardly any time you're going to ever hear him mention the blood of Jesus Christ when he talks or what Christ has done for sinners through his blood. This is where this is exactly what the devil seeks to achieve. But let's go on because there's more. So I just wanted to take note of that prayer because it's that prayer that feeds his narrative. It's that prayer that feeds his understanding of what it is to be saved. So let's let's continue. 
Father, I beg you, have mercy upon your children listening. Your children here. Let eternal punishment not be. Anybody hears package. Let it not be anybody's destiny. Are you interested in Father, including me, let it not be that I knew it and I taught it, but I didn't live it. Give me and everybody here the grace to be able to obey you into eternal life. In Yahushua's name I pray. So there will be justice. The world will be judged. And it will be judged by a man who once again said something. Go with me to the book of Luke chapter 10. I'm reading from 25. One day an expert in religious law stood up to test Yahushua, asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Once again, what's the question again? What's the word? To inherit what? Eternal life. What's today's topic? Eternal life. That's today's topic, just in case you missed it. So how do I get eternal life? What must I do? Must I be a Christian? Nope. Must I go to church? Nope. Must I pay tithe to give offering? Absolutely. No, 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 no. Nope. What must I do to get this eternal life we prayed for? To get this eternal life we've been speaking about? Let's hear from the horse's mouth. Let's hear Yahushua speak this. Luke 10, 26, Yahushua replied, What does the law of Moses say? First of all, I ask you a question. Who was sitting with Yahushua? An expert in the law not just somebody who knew the law an expert an expert at the law so christ wasn't just talking to anyone if he was talking to anyone he probably would have talked about the 613 laws but because he was talking to an expert he knew that the expert knew that going from the beginning of the 613 to the end only two things actually come out and he asked the expert let, let, let's read this together he said, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Yahushua said, do this and you will live. For me, okay, 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 let, let, let's, let's explain this. I, I know I'm running out of time, uh, but, but, but let's explain this a little. Um, I say, brother Shupo, what car? does let me rephrase that question what shirt what is the color of a marathi shirt so if i reply and say wrong what does that mean or i don't agree with you but once i say right what does that mean it means i agree with you christ and the pharisees never agreed scripturally but this time, the both of them agreed that what it takes to make heaven is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Go to church is not in the equation. Be a Christian is not in the equation. Nothing else is in the equation. Love God. And how do you love God? How do you love God? You see, these are road that they've been sending you since you were born. 180 million Nigerians. Let me tell you. If you know how many people are Buddhist and successful, if you want to be successful according to religion, be a Buddhist. But you see, let's remember Christ was not a Christian. I know my Muslim brothers and sisters will love me here. They say, ah, we don't they talk this, this. He was not a Christian. Oh, you think Christ practiced Christianity? Show me one place where he practiced it. Okay, so let me also tell you two things here that I, th I think that's one of the most silly things I, I think I've ever heard someone should say about this. Because, I, I mean, brethren, Let's, let's look at this. How could Christ have been a Christian when it was based on him, Christianity was formed? It makes no sense what Daddy Fries has just said. <laughs> how, how can the originator of the faith be a Christian? The reason why we have Christians is because Christ came with a message and a gospel to save man. And those who believe in him and follow his teachings and his ways are called Christians. Is that simple? So how could Christ have been a Christian? I don't know if you guys caught that, but that's, um, that, that's quite silly. Then something else I also want you to notice is this. Yes, Jesus told the, the man 
when he said, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And they summarized it. Love your neighbor as yourself, right? And then love your, the Lord your God with all your heart, all your might, and all your soul. Now, was Jesus Christ actually telling that man that because Jesus Christ knew that the man in his own sinful state as a man will be able to love God with all his might, all his soul, and all his might? Anyone? Any one of us can do that as a sinner? Oh, yes, if we could do that, we will inherit eternal life. But we know that nobody is righteous. We know that man... That's the point. Exactly. We know that man in his sinful state cannot love God. But these are the things that the priest so oblivious of. Yes, he told the rich, he told the man. But could the, could the man do it? So now, what that the priest is insinuating is that if unbelievers or anybody or people from other religion can fulfill that law, especially knowing fully well that the Bible makes it very clear that it says by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So what he's saying is that, in other words, this is what it takes to inherit eternal life. Nothing about Christ. Notice that. Let's let's continue. But I want you to just notice notice that. Then secondly, that idea of Christ Christ not being a Christian doesn't even make sense. Christ could not have been a Chris, Christian because it was based on him. The followers of Christ were now called Christians. So that that's just you know silly at best. But you know let's let's go on. <laughs> Show me one place where he went to a church. Show me one place where he went to sing praise and worship. Show me somewhere he did sign of the cross. Or anything that you people would do to be as Christianity. Just show me anywhere in the scripture where Christ did one of it. Just show me. And today, me and you, I will just close my Bible and say, everybody, good night. He was not a Christian. He never practiced Christianity. As a matter of fact, he never even taught Christianity. He taught love. No wonder you had to change his name to Jesus so you could sneak in a religion. Christ never taught Christ. He never told anyone here you go home and be a Christian. No. Christ said what it takes to inherit eternal life is love God and love man. And the scriptures say, man, you have, God you have not seen. Man you have seen, you cannot love. And you want to love God. So listen, if you don't know how to love man, you can never love God. You're just fooling yourself. You're just arrodying. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I think comedy is a good way to get the message into your brains. A long thing, sleeping on a bicycle. <laughs> yeah, 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 in the spirit, but I should go. Now, if you go to 29, the man wanting to justify his action, he asked Yahushua, So who is my neighbor? <laughs> John chapter 4. The woman looked at Christ and said, Why are you asking me for water? You Jews normally have nothing to do with us Samaritans. So I, as a Samaritan, am definitely not your neighbor, right? Okay, brethren, for, for time's sake, because I know we know this story, basically, I want to take it a little bit forward. So you know the whole story. He said, who is my neighbor? Jesus Christ now told him, oh, the, a priest passed by. A certain man was beaten, he was ill, and all that. You know the story. The priest passed by. The other one passed by. And then the... Um, this Samaritan who was not regarded saw him and then took him to the inn, bound him, treated him, and then Jesus Christ asked, "Which of these ones you think do you think is the neighbor of?" of and they said, "Oh, the Samaritan." And then Jesus Christ said, "Go do likewise, and you shall leave." Okay, so that is what that the priest has built is the entire gospel on that story to the to to that. But let's take it forward, and then um. I want us, I'll make a comment on that. So I'll just take it forward. Christ replied with a story beside the road. Then this, I'll pay you when I. And he replied, he said, the one who showed him mercy. Uh -huh. And Yahushua said, yes. Now go and be a Christian. Oh, oh, sorry. Now go and start going to church. Oh, now go and speak in tongues. He said, now go and pay tithe. What did he say? He said, now go. And do the same so you can inherit eternal life and you are guarding a shrine today and tell me you're going you are going to the eternal life of your god mammon the Samar samaritans were never christians okay. i'm gonna round up with now that's why you, you see brother is in the spirit this can't be wearing this can't be wearing this can't be. <laughs> let's go to the book of acts chapter 10. I'm ending with this. Even though I have much more, but I'll just end here. We'll continue the road on next weekend. Hmm. 
So don't forget that if he's has established now that he's trying to establish that conversation with that uh, man in the Old Testament under the law as something for Christians, as something for uh, what is obtainable now even after Christ had died. He's oblivious of the fact that Jesus Christ was dealing with the people then based on the law and he had not died at that point. But let's go on. So he's talked about Matthew 25 giving to the poor to inherit eternal life he's now going to show that if you love god with all you had by also helping like you know the samaritan that helped that one do this and you leave so notice that everything is about works works nothing about the blood of christ so far nothing about the cross nothing about our our inability to save ourselves nothing about grace everything you've heard that free you see that it's about works now I will begin to now explain to you what the devil eventually seeks to achieve through this man with time. But let's go on. Acts chapter 10, I'm reading from 1. In Caesarea, they lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius. So he wants to go establish now, using Cornelius, who was not a Christian, that he, he insinuating that Cornelius was saved even without being a Christian or be, without believing in Christ and all that. So he, I just want to let you know so what that what he's trying to establish. And Jiga, I think he won. I think I need to play something where Jiga also tried to establish that because I think Jiga was the first to use this kind of argument. I think he's crystallized it now with Daddy Freeze. But listen, listen very carefully. Who was a captain of the Italian regiment? He was, he was a devout, God-fearing man. He was not a Christian. He was a Roman. The Romans were not Christians, but he feared God, meaning you can fear God without being a Christian. Oh, oh, oh you want me to read this to you again? Nobody doubts that you can fear God without being a Christian, but the issue is salvation. You can fear God, but fearing God doesn't take away your sins, <laughs> unfortunately. So sad. So nobody's arguing that you can't have the fear of God if you're not a Christian. I mean, even in the Old Testament, they were godly people, even in their sinful state. God in his mercy still acknowledged and granted them some form of righteousness based on the you know, shedding of blood and the criteria at the time. And meanwhile, um, Russell and um, 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 uh, Raphael, oh, uh, by the way, we have our, our precious brother Russell is here with us as, as, as usual. I didn't even have the time to uh, do some introduction but i'm sure you'll probably be seeing him later but of course because of time i just wanted us to move on with it but i'm sure you see them Raphael is also here with us um so um um so he's now trying to establish this with cornelius we'll go to scriptures later brethren you please just be patient because this has to be a, a sound teaching which at the end of the day we need to go to scriptures to see what scriptures say and i know a lot of people already know this but for the sake of the gullible for the sake of the young ones for the sake of those who are religious who this man is misleading he's barring them from salvation by teaching them by their works that by their works they can inher inherit eternal life is that not the devil so that at the end of the day when they stand before god there's no atonement for their sins he's not even saying anything about Christ's atonement for these people. Nothing. Just about works. This is evil. This is wrong. It's wrong. Let's go on. He gave generously to the poor. He was a devout God-fearing man as was everyone in his household. He gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly to God. One afternoon about three o'clock he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming towards him. Cornelius the angel said Someone that is not a Christian, God can send angel to the person. Oh boy. Let me saw what you talk. Let, let, let me continue. Oh, I'm in the spirit today. <laughs> Cornelius stared at him in terror. What is it, sir? He asked the angel. The angel replied, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God. Hey, Pantata Ethne. As an offering. <laughs> Let me read this again, just in case. People, please go, go open your Bible. Daddy Freeze is lying. Daddy Freeze wants to give you one for Abu today. Hey, please, please just open it to Acts chapter 10. And let's read 4. Everybody, open it. Open. You are reading it there. You can see it. I hope everybody has a Bible. I'm actually, you can see it. Brothers, you have Bibles. I'm lying to you. I'm lying. I want you to see this lie that I want to lie to you. He said. Cornelius stared at him in terror. What is it, sir? He asked the angel. And the angel replied, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God. So you are going to church to give money to God. Mumunia! Unless that money is going to the poor, you are doing another Arodo. Arodarians, I greet you today. On your way home, some of you are now. You went to do Arodo. 
Don't worry. You see, the Arodo is very, the religious Arodo is very special. It's Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> you will still go and do another one next Sunday. Eh? We are greeting you. So, a man who does not know Christ. First of all, let's even forget anything else that he's doing. His offering has been received by who? But who did he give the offering to? How can God receive? You see, the scripture is not a liar. Matthew 25, 31. I have preached this till right now. I have sore throat shouting it. The only time you can give money to God is if you give it to the poor. You give money to your pastor. You give money to a man. Not to God. You give money to a church. You give money to a temple. Not to God. Don't let them twist the scriptures to you. The only time you give to God is when you give to the poor. Let me continue with the reading. <clears throat> then the angel said, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Now send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He didn't say, Go to Simon Peter. He said, Go did you. Now, now I need to explain who Simon Peter was. Simon Peter, according to the Catholic Church, is the first pope. Yeah. So this is the equivalent of me sitting in my little house and telling you to go bring the pope. Are you, uh, are you also Hello? noticing how he's trying to mimic those um, charismatic uh, American preachers that make all those uh, kind of gestures and all those, uh, not, you know, those kind of things when they are preaching? You know, it's so funny. I, I just, I don't know if you noticed it. I'm just like, you know, in the message, he's just trying to act like one of those, uh, the Pope and all that. But <laughs> it's, it's, and he thinks it's really making sense. But let's, let's continue listening. <laughs> Who do the Catholics consider the first Pope? It's not Peter. Right, Who is Simon Peter? Is it not Peter? A man who wasn't a Christian told his men to go and bring the Pope. Your Jew is a small boy. Look at someone beside your time. Your Jew is a small boy. We are talking Pope here. We are talking about the man Christ looked into his eyes and said, You are the rock Petra upon which I will build the church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail. So this is a deviation, you know, that the Freeze has taught this error severally, but I would not build on it now. He actually believes that Christ, uh, Peter was the rock on which Christ built his church because P Paul, because Peter received that revelation and said that uh, the Messiah, the son of living God, and he said on this rock, on that revelation, on the principle of that revelation, he will build his church. And that the Freeze believes that Peter, a man who betrayed Christ, Jesus Christ carried the entire church and built it on a fallible man. You see, so when people say sometimes that the Freeze interprets the bible carnally you can understand why they say that he has a very carnal he's, he's very charismatic in his presentation and it sounds very bold and convincing but his understanding is very carnal he's not deep he thinks it's very deep he actually believes that the christ built his church on peter on a man that is dead okay now that peter is as is dead now what, what, how is the church still standing on what be, on what principle is, is the church built on you see, anyway, that's just a deviation. I just wanted to let you know because he's preached this so many times that uh, uh, Christ built his church on Peter. And of course, that's the Catholic Church uh, interpretation. And you know that the Freeze also has this sentiment towards Islam and Catholicism. So that's why I'm not surprised he's um, also borrowed from their understanding. But let's move on. Against it. And yet this man, the rock of the church, and yet this man, the first pope, was summoned. As soon as the angel was gone. Now, Simon Peter was staying with Simon, a tanner who lived near the seashore. <sighs> he told them what had happened to him. As soon as the angel was gone, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier, one of his personal attendants. He told them what had happened and sent them off to Joppa. The next day, as Cornelius' messengers were entering the town, Peter went up to the flat roof to pray. It was about noon. And he was hungry. But while a meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the sky open, and something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners. In the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles and birds. Then a voice said to him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat them. No, Lord, Peter declared. I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure and clean. But the voice spoke again, Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. Mm -hmm. The same vision was repeated three times and the sheet was suddenly pulled up to heaven. Peter was very perplexed. What could the vision mean? Just then the men sent by Cornelius found Simon's home. Standing outside at the gate, they asked if a man named Simon Peter was staying there. 
Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Three men have come looking for you. Get up and go and meet the man sent by the God-fearing man who gives his money to God. <laughs> oh, I stopped speaking. I've just made it faster a little, little bit. Let's, let's, let's. I don't see that spirit as holy. Let me continue. <clears throat> so Peter went down and said, I am the man you are looking for. Why have you come? They said, we were sent by Cornelius, a Roman officer. He is a devout and God-fearing man, well respected by all the Jews. A holy angel instructed him to summon you to his house so he can hear your message. So Peter invited the men to stay for the night. They stayed in the Pope's house. The next day he went with them, accompanied by some of the brothers from Joppa. They arrived in Caesarea the following day. Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered his home, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter pulled him up and said, stand up! I am a human being just like you! My chair cannot save you. My mantle cannot save you. What can save you is what you do for God. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Very important. We need to, we need to, we, you see, this is, you see, people need to understand. You see, the devil is very subtle. I need to, I, I won't take that back. He's in the midst of his charismatic gymnastics and this dangling. And a lot of people that are following him will really think he's making sense. They really think he's making sense. You know, just hold on. We need to hear that again. <laughs> You see that? We need to hear that again. When I say... It's too fast. Oh, Andre, it's too fast. Don't make it too okay, fast. Let me you can take... make it 1.5. Not, uh, okay, it's a different three. application I'm using. Okay, let, let's, let's go back. I've taken it back again. As Peter entered his home, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter pulled him up and said, Stand up! I am a human being just like you. My chair cannot save you. My mantle cannot save you. What can save you is what you do for God. That's the devil speaking right there. That's Call the... me a liar and prove me wrong. I, we will prove you wrong. But just that, make that's... sure you use the scriptures, not the lies. That the is Arodon, the that Arodon is... masters. Just hold on again. Brethren, oh, I tell you without mincing words, that is the devil speaking right there. Did you hear that? Your mantle can't save then you. Peter... My chair cannot save you. Again. My mantle cannot save you. What can save you is what you do for God. Now, again, the same spirit that is speaking that says anyone telling you Jesus is the only way to God is a liar and thief is that same spirit speaking to this man. This man is being used by the devil and it is very clear. You see that what can save you is what you do for God. This is clearly contrary to the scriptures that says, By grace are you saved through faith in Christ. It is not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. You, so you can, you can see clearly that Daddy Freeze is, does not have the Spirit of God. A lot of people watching him now may think, Oh, this man, oh yes, oh God, this guy is whatever. But this guy is being used by the devil. There is no one you would see Apart from his twisted interpretation of Matthew 25 and what he's going to do with Colinius and what he's done with that Samaritan, there is no disciple or apostle who preached this message that it is what you do that will save you. And we're going to see that. So where's that if he's getting this message from? And Peter, that's not what even Peter told Colinius. There's no evidence that Peter told Colinius that, that the priest has manufactured this. You see that? That Peter told him, what you do will, that will save you is what you do for God. Tell that free to show us. He said we should prove, prove him wrong. Prove him a liar if we can. But Paul, Jesus, all of them have proven to you to be a liar. And we show from the scriptures. You see why I said this, this, this man is satanic. Now, uh, this uh, man's message is satanic. Rather, sorry. You see, my concern, if you really think about it here, eh, this is what makes the likes of Daddy Freeze more dangerous than the likes of Oyedekbo, Suleiman, Oyakilome, of local many of these people that we are even complaining about you know why let i'll explain to you why with these people okay we say they've given to the god of mammon you know they try to exploit you materially and you know they they lie about so many things but they don't touch on your salvation they don't teach something that will bar people from salvation but that it frees teaching people that it is what they do that saves them, deprives people from entering the kingdom of God. It deceives people into thinking that if by their works and their good works and their works of charity to the poor, they will make eternal life, thereby receiving the great shocker of their life when they stand before Christ. Let's go on. What you do, what will save you, is what you do for God. Hmm. Help you forget that. Call me a liar and prove me wrong today. Okay. But just make sure you use the scriptures, not the lies. The Arodon, 
Arodon masters who do that have taught you. Then Peter ended it with verse 28. You know it is against our laws for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile home or associate with you. But God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. So I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. Now tell me why you sent for me. The Pope went to visit Cornelius, something no Christian had ever done. And if you read Galatians chapter 2, this was what, Peter, this was what Paul rebuked Peter for. The hypocrisy. The hypocrisy of insisting on circumcision. I have so much more to teach you. But I'm just going to rush very quickly. I'm going to quickly take Romans chapter 2 very quickly. 14. Even Gentiles who do not have God's written law show that they know his law when they instinctively obey it, even without having heard it. I remember when Jigger, Jigger, where are you, where are you, where are you, where are you, Jigger? I remember when Jigger and I spoke about this. I was driving home. We're both in the spirit. We dissected this scripture. Oh, you, I, you cannot not be here. How can you not be here? This is a message that was revealed to us. Mm -hmm. By who? Test the spirit, man. By who? Acts chapter revealed? 10 and 34. Then Peter replied, I can see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. Even in the Islamic nation, even in the Buddhist nation, even in the Hindu nation, even in the Shinto nation, even in the Ifa nation. Oh, I wish I could lie to you and send you on an Arudon, but unfortunately, God didn't instruct me to. Okay, so I think I need to really explain this part because it seems to be his joker. It seems like he's made sense there. Now, of course, in all nations, God accepts everybody who fears, who fears him and does what is right. What is this scripture saying? Is it saying that if you're a Shinto, Buddhist, um, you know, Ifa, whatever, if you do your works, you'll be saved? No. Now, what it simply saying is that that veil has been torn. That dividing line. Now you remember that when Jesus Christ was preaching to uh, was preaching and teaching, there was a, a, a woman who was not a Jew who came and she was asking for um, you know Jesus Christ to heal her child or something. I know what Jesus said. Do you expect me to take the children's bread and give to dogs? So basically, the Gentiles were cut away from even having a chance of salvation. Salvation was to the Jews. All right. So, but now after that veil has been torn. Everybody now has access to that to Christ, and that is exactly what uh, the, this whole vision and Peter going to Colinius is saying. It is not saying that Col Colinius, in his state, even though he feared God and he was a, he was the Jews respected him, it doesn't mean he was saved. Because if you notice, one thing that the priest is not going to say, and a lot of people have also pointed out that if the, if if uh, Colinius was already saved, why did why did God send Peter to him? <laughs> so what was the need for him to go for, to send Peter to him to go and preach the gospel? You see that the priest is not at, 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 he's not he's not addressing that. So because he doesn't read the other parts of it. So why was there a need? So why did God not just give Cornelius the Holy Spirit when he was giving to the poor and doing all the charitable works? Why did he not just God not just mm, I've seen you, I've accepted you, your works have ended your salvation, receive the Holy Spirit? Why did he have to send Peter? Because God saw the effort of a man trying, struggling in his own, based on his, the, the righteousness of the law, trying to reach out to God. And God in his mercy heard, he, heard him. It doesn't mean his work saved him. So God now brought salvation to his household by sending Cornelius to preach, by sending Peter to preach the good news to him. And it was on the basis of that, why Peter was telling them about Christ and what Christ had done, not about what you should do for God, as that if he's lied and, 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 and misconstrued. In the course of Peter preaching the gospel, God already knew, of course, they had already received the Holy, they had already received that message. It was on that basis the Holy Spirit fell. Colonius would not have received the Holy Spirit without the gospel. Now, show me one person. Let Daddy Freeze, my challenge to Daddy Freeze and all those people following him is this. Show me one person outside a, the, a Christian, a genuine Christian who got born again that received the Holy Spirit. Show me any narrative you see in the Bible that they said, oh, this man was a good man. He was doing good works and then God sent the Holy Spirit to him. Show me one. You wouldn't see. So you see that Daddy Freeze's interpretation of this is very carnal. He's not, he's not wholesome at all. 
Let's go on. He told me to show Ooh, just to add to that. So you can behold yes, his spirit yes, and his yes. life. I'm taking two calls. Two seven, yeah, one, just make the point that the issue that God was trying to... Wait, hold on, hold on. Two seven one nine six nine. Two seven one two nine. Hold on, uh, um, um, Russell. Sometimes when I try to pause, pause this thing, the thing just... Uh, okay. Where are you? Okay, come on. We can't see you. I can only see oh. Raphael. We can't see you. Okay, that's our brother there. Yeah. Good. We are seeing you now. You yeah, to... just... Okay. Yeah, so the, just a minor detail is that one of the points that God was trying to reveal to Peter mm -hmm. was, his, was his prejudice concerning the gospel to the Jews. Okay. That's, that's one of the things he was trying to ex expound to him. Mm -hmm. It wasn't trying to... It wasn't going beyond because, as you well know, that uh, Peter struggled with salvation for Gentiles. That's true. That's yeah. one of his main challenges. Mm -hmm. So that particular revelation with the vision of the, you know, kill and eat, was just to show him his own prejudice towards the Jews and that salvation is not just confined to the Jews alone. It's for the Jews and the Greeks or Gentiles. That's right. So I that, just wanted to point that out that God was trying to help Peter. And to further buttress the fact that he didn't catch that revelation is where we now see the conflict he had with Paul, you know, with the whole hypocrisy situation. Mm. The fact that the gospel to the Gentiles wasn't commissioned to Peter alone. Because that was a struggle that he had for a very long while. That's so, true. Just wanted to point that out, that, um, that God was trying to help Peter um, in his own particular weakness. Very spot on. Very spot on, bro. You, that's very, very spot on. That's really true. Thank, thank, thanks, thanks, um, thanks, um, brother Russell, for that. Nine six nine and two seven one three nine six nine. Okay, now listen to this. I want you to listen to something very carefully. The last caller. Now we're ending this part. I also play something Jiga said. I think they will, will now go into scriptures. Listen to the last caller. Now you notice something about Daddy Freeze too. When he makes calls, like he likes those quick calls where thirty people people call for 30 seconds and they they just praise him he never gets into a situation where he can ever make himself available for a challenge he tr avoids by all means anybody like you know how Stephen was confronted in the bible like how jesus was confronted to question him and that's one thing you see about cult leaders and cult personalities they don't want to be this they, they hide themselves from any form of uh, from people who will confront their falsehood you know, so they make the calls very snappy. So if you're calling, you're either praising them or the moment you want to say anything negative, they, they cut you off. Now, listen to this. Uh, listen, I want you to listen to this. The last day, a lady that subtly challenged him. But before then, listen to what one guy said. Calls only. I need very quick, very quick. Yes, hello, go ahead. Good morning. Yes, good morning, sir. Go ahead. I just want to tell you, you're doing a good job. And the first, I was invited to the church today. And you are the topic of the church I went to. Ha <laughs> ha, what did they say I did? They are saying that um, the time is ending and people like you should be avoided. And I was just laughing. So, what I said to myself who invited me is if you hear the truth, your conscience will tell you. You hear what this guy is saying? He went to church and the people were telling him that uh, the, the, he, that the priest was the subject of the topic and they were saying that. Um, he should be avoided like a plague or something like that. And you see, they're all laughing and they, they think, oh, you know, those people are ignorant. And, you know, of course, Daddy Freeze and his members, you know, that, that the, so the people who follow Daddy Freeze, you know, who they, you know the, who the Bible and the Holy Spirit is? Is Daddy Freeze. Daddy Freeze is their Bible. He's their Holy Spirit. They are not like the Berean Christians. And after, the, after this, and I'll play something and I'll really show you why Daddy Freeze really should not be regarded as a christian minister a christian leader but as a christian court leader and with evidence i'm going to show you because he's leading so many people astray he's building a cult based on his own personality and his own doctrines that he doesn't subject to scrutiny and as a result he's taking christ away from the, the picture and building his own um, cult-like re uh, religion which we'll get to see but listen listen uh, uh, please, can I quickly make a quick correction? Yes. Roger. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Daddy Freeze is uh, Daddy Freeze go verse for you because he is not a Christian. He has always said that he's not a Christian. So if you are saying he's a Christian cult leader, I think that would be that would even offend him. So okay. All right. Okay. You know where to class, classify him. Okay. So okay. He doesn't. He doesn't even believe he's a Christian. So let us just correct that one quickly. Okay. okay. All right. Point corrected. All right. So we take we take it that he's a. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. That's a very good point, Raphael. Thank you. A religious court leader. 
because I don't know his religion. Whatever his religion is, is a is a is a religious cult leader. A um, a hybrid. He has a hybrid religion that mixes uh, Islam, Shinto, uh, whatever it is, all kinds of faiths together. And they are they are they are Jesus Christ. They are way to salvation is true works so that's the thing that unites this false religion that he 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 uh, advances let's go on i started that teaching in church i wish you all listen to you it means that you do the right job god bless you god bless you sir Woo all right that one hello good morning you are our final caller just please go ahead go straight into it listen hello that is good morning good morning ma go ahead um, my question is, you mentioned um, the last few things you said about God, um, the book in the Bible, where you said God will save us, something, something, you mentioned different regions, with Buddha, and so on, and so on. My question is, are you trying to say, are you in support of all those kinds of religions? Because I'm very sure in the Bible. I'm not in support of any religion whatsoever. Come again. I am, I, I am not in support of any religion whatsoever. Christ never practiced or taught a religion. There are people in those religions who are doing the will of God. Like you read from, read, it's not me that said it. Okay, I wrote Acts chapter 10. Now me, write down. All right, I think, can we end with that? All right, guys, thank you so much. The poor lady, but you see, it's just that we don't have time today. It's an honest question Jacob said Acts chapter 10 is a lesson for believers not unbelievers God used Cornelius who is an unbeliever to teach Peter who was the Pope I don't know what I should even title this message a message to the Pope is too deep this message is deep guys please I need you our biggest, biggest issue is to get this. Everybody cannot be a fool. They cannot just be calling us and saying, look, this message needs to get to worry. This message, what are we doing? Hmm. I have brought the message. I have put it. I've given you. I have told you I will never charge copyright for any of my scriptural messages. Never. I think, hello, Use this video. Hello, OJ. Yeah. I think we should just agree that Daddy Freeze is, uh, is an agent of uh, universalism. Is this, this universal Christian, whatever, ecumenism, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's ecumenism. Just, uh, yeah, it, that's, yeah, that's why I said he's advancing a one world religion, but he didn't understand what I meant by that because he thinks that um, I was saying that he was actively going to start a one world religion, but I was just trying to say that that's, the, that's what the devil wants to use him to do. So, with this, with this now, what does the devil seek to achieve? Uh, seek to achieve with Daddy Freeze is to make Jesus Christ irrelevant. Is to make Christ irrelevant in the question of salvation, because you think about it. If all it takes for me to make heaven is to just give to the poor, right? So that's all it takes for me to make heaven. Just give to the poor. So I don't even need to believe in Jesus Christ at all. It's not necessary yeah. for me to believe in what he has done. Then it means mm -hmm. that Bill Gates, Oprah Winfrey, um, Mus uh, Muslims, Shintos, all they need to do is to just give to the poor. Now let me uh, let me let me let me let me let me bring this thing. Now that this has come to my mind, I don't want to forget. Now, I want to ask Daddy Freeze, and if you're a follower of Daddy Freeze, and if you're the listeners, think about this question I want to ask, and please go back to Daddy Freeze and ask him. So let's assume now that all Christians stopped being Christians. Let's agree that all Christians now reject Christ and they don't no, no longer believe in Christ, right? Mm. And we now decide to now start giving to the poor, to start doing yeah. good work. So let's now be, let's now assume that nobody believes in what Christ has done and his shed blood, right? Mm. Think about this. It means we are all going to go to heaven without Christ. Hmm. Based on that, if Rizzi said, eh, eh, gospel, think, think about this critically because it means that what Christ did was in vain. Why did he die? Because, you see what I'm saying? So, if we all stop believing... Galatians 2.21. Yes. Well, can yeah, you... can, can we read that? Uh, Russell, is that Revelation? Gal Galatians 2.21. Can, can you want to, okay, you want to, you want to read it? Wow. What does it say? Mm. Let's it's, see. Basically, it's basically what you just said. I was just giving... Okay, all right. Uh, Raphael, you want to read it? 
Maybe we should see that. Yeah, let me read it. I can have some scriptures yeah, lined up. We need to see this thing. No, but they I have some script. Really oh, oh, on. trust. There are some scriptures lined up here. I just wanted to first let people understand the message of Daddy Free so that they can understand. We will not go into scripture. We'll go into scripture. What does it say? Look at what the Bible says from uh, Galatians 2:21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Hmm. For if righteousness comes by the Lord, then Christ is dead oh. in vain. Oh God. Thank you, Brother Ross. I see why this thing is not a one-man show thing. You see that I did, that's not even part of the scriptures. I haven't have lined up. Russell, God bless you for that. You see, so if oh God, thank you, brother. If righteousness comes by the law, then Christ died in vain. You see, I had not even listed that scripture. He was just listening to what I was saying and he and he pointed it out. So the point is, if all of us even stop being Christians, we reject Christ, that if he's telling us we can still make heaven by our works. If that is not the devil, I do not know what the devil is. Because what the devil seeks, remember, the devil always seeks to make Christ irrelevant. You need to understand, mm. whether he's using a, a, min, a, a minister or he's using somebody who claims to be following Yeshua, it is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is immaterial. Once he can make that sacrifice, what Christ did, irrelevant, then he has achieved his goal. Because by doing so, he is going to lead so many people to damnation. Because when they stand before God, you know, their righteousness cannot save them. As John MacArthur rightly said, I don't believe in all that he teaches, I know he's a but he was spot on when he said, he said, an entire life of human goodness cannot cancel out one sin. That's right. <laughs> That's such a powerful statement he Correct. made. An entire life of human goodness cannot cancel out one sin. Why? Yeah. But it's very funny, it's very funny though, that, that the priest would believe that it was Cornelius that was now preaching to Peter. If Cornelius, <laughs> <laughs> if his, if the goodness of Cornelius or the arms given of Cornelius was good enough for him, why did God want him to hear the message from Thank Peter? Thank you. And Peter to him. That is the point. So God already saw Cornelius, his his effort, and he showed mercy. Like the Bible says, he causes his rain to. Sh fall on what the good and the untanked and because salvation has now been opened to both jews and gentile he saw this yeah. man trying he now sent peter to save him to yeah. save him so the because that means if peter if peter did not come what is actually me what god was actually telling colleagues yeah. that you have been giving arms you have been helping the poor you have been doing this but it's that's not, not enough, enough. Not yes enough. but that's not enough yes i've acknowledged them i've acknowledged your good works but that can't save you so yeah. let come and hear the gospel and hear the yeah. message that saves you. Another now, point. Yes, yes, uh, my brother. Another point is that the angels aren't even the uh, the medium by which God preaches the gospel. Because you see, he still had to direct Cornelius to a, a, a man. You know, like the Bible says in Romans, yes. the how shall they hear unless someone is sent out, mm -hmm. um, unless it's a preacher? Because mm. gospel has to be preached by someone. So the angel had to redirect Cornelius to Peter. And then it was like a two-for-one kind of deal. Okay, they're helping themselves. God was trying to help Peter. Mm. At the same time, God was trying to even give, give the, message the message through him. Spot on. That's really true. That's very true. God bless you. Now, I want you to see, I want us to please, let's play. I want us to play uh, Play this. Um, I think Ra Raphael was here too with Daddy Freeze. I want you to see him confirming this thing again in... Um, in this, um, where Ayara and Raphael went to see um, Daddy Freeze at the time. So hold on, let's see. Uh, the Judaism system, based on the teachings of the Pharisees as a whole, had to come down because of the many flaws created by taking from the poor. That is why Jesus... There's one blanket scripture, 25, uh, Matthew 25, 31, that even covers any human being. Jesus said, when I gather all nations, what will take them to make heaven is one line, taking care of the poor. So you when that. you rob you, you, the you poor, you heard that. That is why Jesus, there's one blanket scripture, 25, uh, Matthew 25, 31, that even covers any human being. Jesus said, when I gather all nations, what will take them to make heaven is one line taking care of the poor. So what will take them to make heaven is one line taking care of the poor. So when you 
you have that. So very, you can see that uh, that is really here. You can see how serious that is. Now, let me add something to that. And there's a question I would also want to ask Daddy Freeze and those people following him. So let you see the problem and the alien error with this kind of teaching is this. Okay, so let's, let's, let me ask the question here. Daddy Freeze, if you're listening, and Jiga and the followers. Okay, so where is the threshold? So let's assume that there's Anini, he's killing people, but he has, he has taken care of certain poor people. Okay, you also have Hitler that has killed six million Jews, but he's taking care of, he has also helped the poor. You also have Bill Gates too, on how Oprah Winfrey, they've, they've, they've built schools, they've done this, they've taken care of the poor. So you still have some people that are still committing sin. So, so when does, where's the threshold? Where does God say, so when God wants to judge all these people that are taking care of the poor, does he say, you took your level of taking care of the poor is 50%, and this one is 20%, so you make heaven. So that person has to be able to practically tell us how this works. I don't know if you understand my question. So how does this work? Where do, where's the cutoff line? So does the person just have to, so for example now, if I'm a sex predator, you know, do I just need to go and take care of the poor once, and once I've done that, oh, hooray! You know, so how does this thing work? It says a blanket scripture that covers anybody. So you can see Jews, Gentiles, um, unbelievers, atheists, or bony people, like those that are of us. Do you see what I'm saying? So, uh, how does it work? How often do you have to give to the poor? So that person needs to practically now come and tell us how this works. So I wanted, I wanted to see that. And let's, let's also see this. I want to see this one when he preaches um, uh, Christian Akinome's um, wedding. I want, you to, I want you to see what Jiga said here. I think if I can get to that, it's very important because Jiga was also one of the persons that um, crystallized this second uh, thing when it came in. So let me just let's see this for you now. So this is an ad I can help. I'm going to skip it. If can... not, then just get, skip video. Please, I would like to encourage those that are watching to hit the share button. Share, share, share. This is the message no, we're going to do. Yeah, 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 please share, please share. So let me see if I can bring Jiga in here. Well, uh, Ralph, uh, um, if you have anything to say, meanwhile, uh, um, Raphael or uh, Russell, you could just add to what you've listened to so far while I look for this thing. Please, just give me a while. Let me, I just need to. I think I got that wrong one. Let me just find it. Um, so based on what you've heard so far, you could just um, make any contributions right. while I just, um, let me find this. Yeah, I believe we should um, spend some time to really, really say what eternal life is all about. Yes, um, we, we, yes. I, I have, we will do that. But I just want okay, you to good. say, we're definitely going to do that. Uh, oh, the, okay, very good. The, 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 uh, um, it will not be complete without, um, you know, um, it will not be complete without that. Yeah, because his emphasis of, of, he said, he said, what is eternal life? Sorry. He said, how do you get eternal life? He said, you should love God. I was like, oh, really? I mean, that, that was the, that was the summary of how you, how you get eternal life. Yeah. So the question now is, what is eternal life? And how do you get it according to scripture? Because he's written from the Bible, so yep. he he'll say that this is what the scriptures say, or these are the red letters of Jesus. Okay, fine. Yes. So then we need to now put in proper context what he said, right, in light of what is actually written, or in light of what eternal life really is. So I, I just hope we should we should do that. Oh, it will not take long. Definitely, but, yeah. definitely, we'll do that. I'm just I just want to I just want you to listen to. Oh, def, trust me, we'll definitely do that. We'll do we'll do that. I just want to um, us to see something very important. What Jiga said here, because this is where they got this stuff from. Um, when he called Jiga in to talk about. I to get... No, I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. Yes, I found it because this is where he was trying to uh, negate. You know, when I did that, that freeze and the. The, and the world world religion uh, jiga went to uh, bring report to him the things i said and he was trying to um jiga was trying to say talk about colonial so i want you to listen to what jiga is saying here let me see discussed it and we discussed it and, and, and james was saying james says even the, the, the prostitute rahab was considered, right, rahab was considered righteous because she did she protected the Jewish. Uh, we know you understand. Yeah, she protected those people. Let me read it. Let me read it. I mean, so what am I trying to say? I told you that if I said most Christians forget they, they focus on the image of Jesus while they lose the essence. God bless you, bro. You see, I don't know if how many people can remember the last time, you know, I don't know whether I was someone that called. You know why I told you about this um, essence, Jesus essence thing now that is, that is, that is, that is gaining ground. So they are trying to make that person of Jesus Christ irrelevant and now make him an essence. So in other words, when he's an essence, you could follow his essence and be saved. So that the aspect of the person himself. You beholding the person, you believing in his person. You see, you see, Jiga. These are these the kind of subtle messages they are preaching. Yes, they said we focus on this person and forget the essence. We should not forget the essence. We should both remember the essence and the person as well. You see, but what Jiga and the likes of Daddy Freeze and that their clique, what they wish to do is to negate that person for the for the world and make people believe that people can be saved by following his the ways and his essence. 
Okay, so continue to listen. I'm hearing something. Can you mute? Um, I'm still hearing that. Um, I think somebody's there. I think I don't know whether that should be like Raphael. Anyway, let's 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 go on. Listen. You hear that? The essence of Jesus Christ is what matters. You hear Jiga? Let's go on. It's James. It's in James. I hope you have a few minutes. Okay. James 2.14. It says, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accomplished, accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, then I have faith. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith with my, by my deeds. You believe that there is no one God. No, sorry. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that. I show them. You foolish person, do you want the evidence that faith without it is useless? So faith without it is useless. What was our, was not our, our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Righteousness. Oh. Okay. And he was called God's friend. You see that the person is considered righteous by what they do, not by faith alone. Thank you, Jiga. In the same way, was not even Rahab, Rahab the, rest, the prostitute, considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off. Caleb the and what's the other guy's name? Joshua. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. All right. Brethren, I need to, sorry, please, I need to take out time to really address this because you see, this is what makes these people very dangerous as far as I'm concerned. Please, so just permit me to really address what Jiga just said. Now, look at how they have twisted James in a way. So don't forget that James compliments paul and I, and I will explain what is going on here if you just if i may just give me a while now jiga has read a portion of the scriptures that has no bearing whatsoever to the cause they are championing how how do i mean james is not negating faith in any way okay now paul spoke about us being saved by faith now what is james actually doing here it would appear to me that james had already seen this People like the sin is dead, you know, uh, kind of people in that era. And he was trying to address a particular problem. Because there were, there were people now going around saying, oh, they had faith. But the evidence of that wasn't showing in their life. Not that they were negating, he was negating faith in the first place. So when James was speaking, his message was complementary to Paul, was completing it. Okay? It's not like they were contradictory. So James was simply saying that, just saying that you have faith alone without there being any evidence is no good all right that faith must be justified by your actions it has nothing to do with what jigan that the friends are preaching that by works alone save save you so james is acknowledging that yes that faith must be there first of all in other words yes you felt you need to believe in christ first but how do you prove that you have believed in christ your actions will show so you can see that it has nothing whatsoever to do with what the, uh, Jiga is saying here. But Jiga is trying to use Rahab to justify their gospel, which is false. But Rahab had faith. You heard where uh, um, 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 Jiga said uh, uh, Rahab didn't have faith. I think he said it somewhere. Let me see. So now, what you're saying here is your faith is, is important, but your okay. action is way more important. You heard him. She was a prostitute. Okay. Now let, she knew. Let, let us was... let us stop here. Please can someone turn to uh please can, can one of you read Hebrews eleven 
31 for me. You just heard Jiga say Rahab didn't have faith, right? Please, can so, um, someone read um, Hebrews 11, 31 for me? Raphael or Russell, please, can one of you just help me read that, please? Hebrews 11, 31. Yep. By faith. Are you hearing me? Yeah, we can hear you. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished, not with them that believed not, once she had received the spies with peace. Okay. So, I thought we just heard Jiga say that Rahab didn't have faith. <laughs> he just said Rahab didn't have faith. So, you see, now, what is the problem we're having here? James is complimentary, com complimenting Paul. Paul and James both spoke about Rahab. James was emphasizing the fact that Rahab's faith was shown with her works. Right? But he was not negating the fact that she had faith in the first place. Paul is now explaining here that Rahab had faith. Because it was on the basis of her faith she acted. But we just heard Jiga say that Rahab didn't have faith. She did have faith. But her, but her works justified her faith. Alright? Okay. So, now... Let's let, let's leave that now. So we will we, we'll begin to go into some. Um, but I want you to see. I want to just play this um, from Daddy Freeze. Something he said here that I want you to take note of. That clearly establishes that why I said people should really avoid this this religious cult. Yeah. Now listen to what he said here. I can bring this up. Let me see. Okay. Oh no! Why is this playing? Why is this down? Preach the word. Show the love. How do you preach the word? You kill bad doctrines. You. How do you show the love? You love everyone. You do charity, charitable deeds. Take care of the poor. Make sure the poor are not mocked. Hello. That was all I wanted to do. Anything else, you people sort it out, sort it out, sort it out. I was like, sort this out, sort this out. Until I realized that. Wait a minute. People are sorting out more than what I asked them to sort out. So at that juncture, I started biting some things and holding on to them. First thing I said was, you know what, the free nation is not a democracy. And it was one pastor that suggested it to inside my house. We had a meeting. Some people were live online. Some people were with me in the house. In this my house. The pastor now said, you are opening a branch in America. We're opening a branch in America at that time, at that stage, and like a year plus ago. And somebody said, what if the people in America, what if tomorrow they start preaching a different message? I sat there and I thought about it. And the first thing that came to me was the free nation is not a democracy. So I'm like, whatever you guys want to do, just remember that there's only one message. And hmm. the message is, has never been up for scrutiny. You hear that? Some you hear that? So you see, when I say that uh, this, that the freeze is a court leader, I, you see, I don't talk because I just want to talk. Listen very carefully to what he said. And you see the implication of, of this. So Mike, whatever you guys want to do, just remember that there's only one message. And the message is, has never been up for scrutiny. There's only one message. And the message has not been up for scrutiny. <laughs> uh. Sometimes the people who are close to me, I run some things by them, but they know from the beginning that the message is not a democracy. It's not what we debate. It's not up for voting. It's not up for suggestions. This is the message. Uh, uh, it seems like, uh, uh, um, Russell, you want to say something? Yeah, just, um, just a whole. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you know how you said, he just said, how do you show love? Right yeah. by doing charitable deeds. Mm. If you read Corinthians, one Corinthians thirteen, where it says love is kind, love is this. Yeah. Um, and then he now says, let me read verse three. He says, if I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, mm -hmm. and I give my body to be burned, and have not loved, it profit me nothing. It 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 just automatically because that notion that the that how you show love is by what you do. It already just removes the foundation from that particular belief. That's because right. when Paul was trying to break down love, showing you that it's much more than what you think, he says, look, 
if I do these things, yes, and I don't and have, have love, not the love. It's yes, a, it automatically tells you that love is not the things. That it's not the thing. Right? It's not. It's not I the just action. I wanted to point that out. Continue. Good point. Very good point. Very good point. You can actually do those acts of charity and not even have love. Can you without remember? Without the love. Yes. Actual with, love. Itself. Without that love. Now, how many of us can remember how Pitman? Now that you've mentioned this, that comes to mind. Do you remember that how Pitman stood at the street corners? Do you remember that he fostered 32 people into his home? Russell, did you listen to that uh, message with us? How Pitman? Remember he took care of 32 people, <laughs> deranged, abused people in his home. <laughs> you see that? So he did charitable deeds, but when he stood before God, God told me all he did was in vain. So that's a practical example to buttress what you just said. He said, because you didn't do them for me, you did them for a false God. So, that the priest has the cart before the horse. Charitable deeds do not go before your salvation. You are saved to do good works. Not that you do good works to be saved. <laughs> you, see, you see that? All right, okay. So that's, I'm happy you spot, spotted that. Now you can see him saying here. If I preach it, there's so many messages. The first that thing that, that the priest doesn't know is that you can, you can give to the poor and not love Christ. That, that's but you true. cannot love Christ and not give to the poor. That is right. It's Thank so you. so basic. There's Thank nothing you. deep. You can give you can give everything to the poor and yet not love Christ. People but do there's every no day. way you can love Christ and you will not give to the poor. That's and what that I'm, I'm going to that's gonna be one of my next posts. That what he just said. That's gonna be a, a caption. My next post is gonna be what Raphael just said. You can give to the poor and not love Christ. I don't love yeah. Christ. It's but not you a cannot, prerequisite. Yes, but you cannot, you cannot love, Christ love Christ and not give, and to, not give to the poor. That's so spot on. Well done, well done, my brother. You see, I'm, I'm really, that's so spot on. Preached but, and unpreached. Unpreached meaning that I did not come back to say it's a lie. I just came back to, I realized that the people are not ready yet. Because they are focusing on this. Okay, so the impact of that when that priest says his message is not up for scrutiny, that's very antichrist right there. A true minister of God will not say that. Do you know why? Because God will make ensure that there are checks and balances within his body. When you say that my message is from God and is never subject to a debate, and it's not up for scrutiny, hmm. so it means that whatever I say, you need to accept it that it's from God, hook, line, and sinker. Okay, so the day that Christ comes to tell you Jesus is not the only way to God, and anybody who tells you that Jesus is the only way to God is a liar and a thief, you are to accept that message without questioning him. Yeah. <laughs> you are to accept it without debating it. If that is not the devil speaking, tell me now, even, even the Berean Christians, the Berean Christians that heard the apostles preach, they went back to check to see if those things were right. Even this is clearly contrary to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the model with which the Bible says we should gather. The Bible says, let the prophets speak two or three and let the others judge. So if the words of prophets were subject to the judgment or the scrutiny, this is genuine prophets, so if they were subject to the judgment and scrutiny of the prophets, other, pe other people there, other prophets there, then who is Daddy Freeze? Who has no vindication from God whatsoever? No evidence but claims that God called him and is giving him the message and is not telling you that whatever he says, you are not to question it. Brethren, come on. you know. Now, I want to play one more thing and then we'll now begin to go into eternal life. Just one more thing. I want you to see very, something very interesting here. Listen to what, what um, this is what Daddy Freeze said here. Interestingly, how he contradicts himself. But look at how he glossed over this very important truth about eternal life. So if life. you go with me, Listen to listen. the book of John chapter 6. Listen very carefully. I'm reading from 60. Many of his disciples said, this is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept it? Yehoshua, aware that the disciples were complaining, said to them, does this offend you? Then what would you think if you see the Son of Man ascend to heaven again? The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. Uh, 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 sorry, sorry, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that, sorry. Say that again. This is Jesus speaking, oh, Daddy Freeze. The Red Bible, let's hear that again. That the priest says the Red Bible, now we are, we are now teaching about, I'm going gradually now into eternal life. How do we get eternal life? So we are, we are, we are moving away from that the priest, now let's begin to teach about eternal life. But I wanted to show you yourself, that show you, brethren, that even Daddy Freeze himself understands what Jesus has taught about eternal life. But yet he contradicts the same Yeshua. So I want to start with Christ because you know that the phrase always exhausts the Red Bible. Let's start with the master himself, Yeshua, how he taught 
Christians, how he taught his disciples, how he taught people that people get eternal life. Not what he was teaching under the law. Because then, all those references that the priest has made to the you rich young ruler um, and all that that says, go and do this and you will live, and you will live we know that he, he was still addressing people under the law. And of course, that's what they were told at the time. But after he died, the, revel the true revelation of salvation came forth. Well, you can't be going back to the law. Now, before I say that, I'll, I'll play this again. I don't want to forget this, brethren. I want to share something with you now. Daddy Freeze has said that it takes Matthew 25 is a blanket rule that saves everybody. There's nothing you can do about it. He also makes reference to the 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 other, um, um, I think it was in Luke where he said, it's Samaritan story where he said, do this and you will live. Now, my question to Daddy Freeze is this, and those are, that, so you know I've been asking so many questions, so take this back to him. Then how does Daddy Freeze now question Adeboye, who goes to reference Matthew 23, 23, to favor tithes? Now, Daddy Freeze has told, taught that if you teach tithes and practice tithing, your salvation is even questionable because you're going back to the law. But at, that's what, at the same, Matt, the same way, that the priest is making his argument with the Samaritan is the same way Pastor Adeboe is making his argument with tithes. So what's the difference? Because Adeboe goes to Matthew 23, 23 and, and says, Jesus Christ told them, this you should, that's regarding tithes, this you should do and not forget the way your matters of the law. So based on that, Adeboe has established, like the Pastor Adeboe and others have established that Christians should pay tithes. But that the priest doesn't accept it. Why? So go back to Daddy Freeze and ask him that if he's making an argument of eternal life based on a conversation Jesus had with a, with, with a, with a Jew under the law, then why can't Pastor Adeboe make his own argument with Matthew 23, 23, where Jesus also told them that they should, they should continue should pay tithes, but they should not forget the weightier matters of the law. So you see, there's a problem there. But let's listen to what he said here again, because this is the very important, interesting part. Let's go back again. The spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. Gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. Again. The spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. The spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. The spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. The spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. I'm playing over and over and over again so that it may sink. So he's he's talking, he's now referring to Christ, Yeshua, the one he says. I'm starting with that. The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. Daddy Fris is reading right from the Red Bible there. But guess what? That meant nothing to him. He glossed over it. He's not interested in that. Did he not hear Christ? The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort, what? Accomplishes nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but no. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Mm. But some of you do not believe me. For Christ knew from the beginning which ones didn't believe, and he knew who would betray him. Then he said, that is why I said the people can't come to me unless the Father gives them to me. This is Christ himself saying the people cannot come to him unless about God gives them to him. So who is now a little me? Now, it, yet you claim that the people can come to God by themselves and be saved by doing charity. <laughs> you see the contradiction? <laughs> All right. So I'm using Daddy Fris himself to contradict himself but you see he didn't go to emphasize what christ said there the spirit alone gives eternal life human effort accomplishes nothing human effort it didn't say human effort contributes it accomplishes nothing at this point many of the disciples turned away and deserted him then yehoshua turned to the 12 and asked are you also going to leave it's not everybody that's going to accept your message it's not everybody that's going to accept mine hmm. mine comes from god mm -hmm. If you like it, accept it. If you don't like it, you are not going to go to hellfire for not accepting it. So please. I will say it on the radio. Where it is against broadcast, uh. tune off. You don't have to listen to my message. You don't have to follow me. Go and address me on your platform. Hey. <laughs> you don't have to accept the message of Christ. It's not by force. So, so please. If you want to unfollow me, unfollow me. If you want to come and debate on my, I will block you. Hey, like man. I blocked those that came yesterday, the ones that came two days ago, the ones that came last year, and the ones that are coming tomorrow. I will block you. I do not run a democracy. I am sorry. You can come and attack me from any angle as you are your business. Okay. So I just wanted to prove that again. You see, so Daddy Freeze is, that is why you see that Daddy Freeze doesn't engage people. He doesn't engage his opponents. He doesn't engage people that will confront him because he wants to maintain that cult personality and let people build on that his false religion is creating 
through his own gospel, his own religious gospel. So any opposition, he blocks any opposition. That's the cult leader. You see why this guy is a religious cult leader? I don't just say that because I hate him. I have nothing against that phrase, but the devil is really using him. He doesn't know. But I pray for him. I pray for him that God will actually show him the true path to salvation. Because as it is now, he doesn't even yet know the ABCs of Christ. Now, let's go into scriptures. Let's go into scriptures. Sorry, brethren. I'm sure I had to boy pull with a lot of things. I want us to now see. Let's first look at Matthew 25. Because um, it's on that basis that Daddy Freeze has built many of his, uh, his teachings. So I want us to just look at scriptures now. And if you're here, let us see what the Bible teaches about eternal life. Okay. So I want us to quickly start with a, a, a quick... Um, I have so many things here, but I'll go through them. So this is the part addressing Matthew 25. This is the part he, he always reads where the Bible says, the Son of Man will come and he will separate the sheep from the goats and all that. He said he will gather the nations. Now, so, and you heard them saying that, oh yes, the Bible didn't say he will gather Christians. He will gather the nations. So they've automatically concluded that he will choose people from all these nations, whether Buddhists, atheists, and all that. But what are the first fails? To realize that, yes, of course, from this nation, he will separate the sheep from the goat. Listen to this. When the Son of Man comes, I'm reading from um, 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 31, comes in the glory of, of, of uh, um, and of the holy angels with him, he will sit on the throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on the right hand. So take note of those words, sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on the right, Come you, to, uh, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when I was hungry, you fed me and all that. But notice that they were first sheep. It is the sheep, first of all, that he's telling this. Not just anybody who gave to the poor. So let us begin to actually exegete Matthew 25 in its right context. So this one, this what I wrote. I just let me, I'm going to read this very fast. It says, um, number one, the ones Jesus referred to. So, so for us to look at this, uh, let me see, such as David Abraham. Uh, okay, so I said yes, of course, he will gather his sheep and the goats from all nations. Of course, where else is he going to gather them? In every nation, you have God's sheep and goats. Of course. And how does one expect Jesus to say all Christians? Because that refused was arguing to say, he didn't say all Christians. He couldn't have said all Christians. Because you have God's sheep and goats from all the nations, even before Christ and after Christ. So, he, I, I, I went on to say that um, um, all believers in Christ, um, when they are, I said, so I said, how can Jesus say all Christians or all believers in Christ when they are also those who are part of his sheep that died before the coming of Christ, such as David, Abraham, you know, the argument makes no sense. The verse simply tells us that from all the nations, he will separate the sheep and the goats. He never mentioned anything about religion or indicated that only Christians will be saved. But for us to properly exegete this text, we need to actually first know this. Number one, the ones Jesus referred to as his brethren. Number two, the will of God. And number three, his sheep and what makes them his sheep. These are all connected and not isolated as Daddy Freeze mistakenly thinks. So let's first know, the first question I want to see is, who are the people Jesus referred to as his brethren? He said, those who do the will of my father. Not just anybody. He said, as long as you did this to the list of my brethren. So let's see Matthew 12, 24. But he answered and said unto him, and told him, who is my mother? Who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and my sisters and my mother. Okay? So Jesus is very clear about who his brethren are. Now, he also established that it is the one that does this will that we enter into the kingdom of heaven, not just those who perform one act of helping the poor. All right. So Matthew seven twenty one says this: Not all who, not everyone who said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those that do the will of my Father in heaven. So which leads us to the next question: So what is this will? Who, what is this will? Number two, let's see. What then is the will of God in the context of the above statement? Who qualifies then to make heaven? John six forty tells us. 
And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise Beautiful. him on the last day. Bingo. <laughs> you see, we're, Baron, we are not exegeting scriptures. So, the ones that enter into heaven are those who do the will of the Father. Not just anybody. And Jesus Christ has defined what this will is. So, he says, it's, this is the will of him, that everyone that sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. So, if you see the Son and you don't believe in the Son, can you have eternal life? No. So, you see that? So, we now saw false teachers, on the other hand, are the ones coming to tell you or that performing good deeds of helping the poor alone, even though you reject the salvific work of Christ, we give you salvation. For, you know, so uh, I also says, but we see clearly that it is only those that do the will of the Father that enter heaven, and this will is not end by, by their good works, but by believing in the Son and His shed blood. For this is what reconciles all sinners without exception to God. All works out, outside this are filthy rags before God. Does the Bible not say when our most righteous deeds are, are filthy rags? So let's now look at the third one. So who is the sheep? Because he said he will gather the sheep. Because we're not looking at Matthew 25, not in that isolated context that the priest preaches it. Now who is the sheep that he's going to gather? Let's look at the sheep. John 10, 3. To him, the potter opened, the, the, opened and the sheep hear his voice. And he called his own sheep by name and leaded them out. Uh, verse 4. And when he put forth his own sheep, he went before them, and the sheep follow him. Right? For they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. So it is very clear that the criteria for being Jesus' sheep is not one who performs the act of good deed, but one who hears his voice and follows him. Gods, on the other hand, do not hear his voice. Now, so how then can Daddy Freeze teach that a person who doesn't believe in Christ, who rejects Christ, doesn't even acknowledge what he has done, how can Daddy Freeze now classify such a person as a sheep based on his twisted reading of Matthew 25? You see the problem? You see the whole problem here? So let's go on. Um, so let's, brethren, please permit me, let's now look at some other scriptures that talk about how we can get eternal life as, you know, the... Um, our brothers have, um, because it's not just talking about that, it freezes false doctrine. But let's look at what the scriptures teach about how we get eternal life. Now, I want to challenge that it freeze. That if should show us a New Testament disciple, I'm go he said, he said I should, we should prove him a liar, but we have to prove from the scriptures, right? And I'm going to do that. That if freeze, my challenge to you and Jiga and whoever follow you, show us one apostle or anybody in the New Covenant that taught that we receive salvation by our deeds, by doing good works. I'm, I, I'm not asking for four or two or three. I'm just asking for one person. That's my challenge. As a matter of doctrine, show us one person, one apostle, one teacher that God sent that said we get eternal life by giving to the poor. Now, that if you say we should prove, prove he's a liar, I want to prove that you're a liar because the Bible says let God be true and everyone be a liar because we say we should prove it from the scriptures. Now, I have four witnesses here. I'm going to prove your doctrine is demonic, is satanic, is not from God. And I pray that you repent. I don't have anything against you. I love you. You're God's creation. I pray that you really come to see the true knowledge. You really come to the true knowledge of God. All right? I'm going to use four witnesses to prove you wrong. And I hope you repent. I'm going to use Christ himself to prove that you're lying. And I'm going to use John, his faithful disciple. I'm going to use Paul. And I'm going to use Peter. Jesus and his three notable apostles all prove you wrong. Now, let's start from Jesus himself. Now, so what did Jesus teach about salvation? Let's start with Jesus. Now, we are going to look at John 3.16. All right? Everybody, we know this is very popular. It's up there on the screen as well. I'm going to read it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Now, he's not talking about Christians. Because that refers to say, Oh, Christ, only Christ came for Christians. If, you, if you're a Christian, you can, you, know, you can choose Christ, but there are other ways. But said the world, and that whosoever believes in him, what? Should not perish, 
but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but, this, but to save the world through him. So how else can you save the world? You can only save the world through Christ. Whosoever believes in him is not condemned. But whosoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's only one and only son. This is the red Bible now. I want to start with Christ because there are few who say I'm not a Pauline person or I Christ. So I'm reading the red Bible for him. Jesus did not say, oh, whoever doesn't believe but, well, does charity, gives to the poor. No, 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 he didn't say that. He said it's condemned already. So, in other words, do all, like our people, you see, or whatever, do all your charity day and night. An entire life of human goodness can never cancel out one sin. Right? Because God has concluded all of us under sin. There is no one righteous, no one that does good. For all have sinned. All, he didn't say some, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All. So that is why there is only one way to all men for salvation. Only one way. Because all have sinned. Like John, John MacArthur quoted again. Only one way to salvation for all men without distinction. Because all have sinned without exception. I like that quote. So, we've seen Jesus Christ said, believing in him, he has attached you to eternal life. I'm not just looking at one isolated verse. You go to Matthew and you think that's how you exegete scriptures and come to knowledge. No, that's schoolboy error. Now let's go to John 17, 3. The same consistency. So you build and teach with the consistency of scripture, not with some isolated verses. John 17, 3. Jesus praying to the Father, speaking to the Father, Jesus said this, This is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and to know Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Now look at how the Amplified Version puts it. I love it. He said, and this is life eternal. It means to know, perceive, recognize, become acquainted with and understand you, the only true and real God, and likewise to know him, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah whom you have sent. So profound. But that verse is telling us that you can get eternal life without knowing Christ. Yes, atheist, just give to the poor. So two, two. Now this is his red Bible. Now Jesus. Now let's go to Mark 16. <laughs> this is Jesus. I'm establishing with Jesus now. Mark 16. How do you get eternal life? You can see that eternal life is never connect, disconnected from knowing, believing, experientially having that relationship with Christ. Throwing yourself at your the grace of Christ is a gift from God. Mark. 16 says, he said unto them, this is still Jesus, the red Bible, so that I'm, I'm, I'm starting with the master himself. Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whosoever does not believe will be condemned. <laughs> How clearer can that be? That phrase. He didn't say, whoever does not believe, but you see, if you give an act of charity like, you know, like Cornelius, ah, you know, you will be saved. No. Because Christ had not died and he has established the way not under the law anymore. You see, when Christ was talking to those Samaritans and all those, there was still a transition there. So he was still dealing with them under the law. But how many people could really actually love God with all their hearts? Was when God told that rich man to go and sell what do, the rich man said, "I've done this with, with, with uh, from the from my mother's youth." Was just Christ actually telling him that if he goes to do that, is that how he was going to get eternal life? But Jesus Christ was actually trying to prove his heart. Because when the Samaritan claimed that he had, uh, sorry, the rich young ruler claimed that he had done all those things from his youth, Jesus Christ did not argue with him. But Jesus Christ just wanted to prove to him that what he, he thinks he's doing so, but it's not true. Because say, you've loved God with all your heart, right? You said you've done that. You've loved your neighbor as yourself, right? Okay, go and sell all that you have. And give to the poor. Notice that it didn't end there. He said, and take up your cross and follow me. So it is not just Christ did not tell him, go and sell all that you have and give to the poor. He didn't end it there. That is where them daddy freeze they end their doctrine. That's what makes it devilish because they cut out the part of following Christ. You see the whole thing there? So if the devil can preach a half truth and make Christ irrelevant, that's all he needs to do. Take up your cross. He said, What? Give to the poor and then follow me. Is that what that priest is teaching them? No. And then what happened to the rich young ruler? He went away sorrowful. And Jesus Christ said, what? How difficult it would be for those that have riches to enter. Jesus Christ just proved to that rich young ruler that he did not really love God. As he claimed he did in the commandments. <laughs> Alright, let's move on. Okay. So, we see that Jesus Christ has established... I've shown you three verses that have established eternal life from Christ himself. Now, let's look at John. Now, I'm going to a disciple now. How did, how did John teach about eternal life? How do we get this life? 
What was the summary of everything Jesus Christ was saying in the book of John? He said this, he said, John 20, 30, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Did you see that? No, John is not telling you that these things were written that you may learn how to give to the poor to have eternal life. That you may believe. You see, believe again. Believe. All right, let's move to Peter. Now, I've established with Jesus. I've established with John. Now, that's why said we should prove him a liar. Said we should, I'm, I'm bringing witnesses. Tons of witnesses said, prove me. But do it from the scriptures. And I'm doing that from the scriptures. Let's look at what Peter said. I'm reading Acts chapter 2, verse 38. When he finished, when they received the gift of the Holy Ghost and they were speaking in tongues, the poor were pricked into their hearts. Now, this is, this is the crux of the matter. They, they got and they asked, what shall we do? This was what Peter said. He didn't tell them, go give to the poor and shall make heaven. He said, he said, Peter preaching, he said, I'm reading from um, um, 36 now. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were caught to their heart and said to Peter and others, brethren, what shall we do? Now listen to the reply, reply Peter gave. Peter replied, repent! Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins. So you see that? So even if Colinius was doing all those good works, he did not have forgiveness of sins. He didn't. It took Peter to go to Cornelius to hear the message. It is that message that gave him salvation. And it was on the basis of that, the Holy Spirit came down. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises for you and your children and for all that are far off. For all whom our Lord our God shall call. So you see, it is for the entire world. world. People did not become Christians because it was a channel the channel to which you access this gospel is by receiving Christ. Of course, I know Christianity has now become adulterated and all, but I'm talking about Christianity in the true sense of what it really means. The following Christ and his teaching and his gospel. Yes, that is it. So you see, Peter again, I've established from Jesus, from John, from Peter. Now let's look at what Peter also said in, in Acts chapter 2.21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see that again? You see that again? He didn't say, and whosoever shall give to the poor shall be saved. So I'm giving you tons, brethren, tons of witnesses against the false teachings of Daddy Freeze. Alright? Now, Acts 4, 12. This is Peter again. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. You see that again? Now, brethren, let's crystallize it with the, with the jailer. Now, this is the, this is the icing on the cake. You know the story where Paul went somewhere and he preached. He cast out a demon from a woman with a divination. They, took, they, they, you know, they got angry and the people who were making money from me did not cho choose to make, uh, there was this uproar and they locked him up and all that and they, they were in jail. And they were, Paul and Silas, they were preaching and all that and the angel came, shook the whole place. The place was broken. The, the jailer there thought that they had run away and wanted to kill himself, right? All right? And this was the response. Now listen to this. This is so profound. I just wish Daddy Freeze and Jiga and the people who just, they are misleading, we just take our time to just study the scriptures. The jailer called for light. I'm reading from 29 now. Rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas because he thought they had escaped, right? He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Brethren, this is the crux of the matter. This is the crux of the matter, brethren. Now let's hear what they, what, they, what they responded. Okay? If that the priest had rewritten this Bible, what would we have heard? What must you do to be saved? Oh, don't just go give to the poor and you shall be saved. Was that what Paul and Silas told them? No, let's hear. What shall we do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke this word of the Lord to him and to all others in the house. And that hour of that night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. They made, then immediately, he and all his household were baptized. Did you hear that? Whoever, what did Jesus say? Whosoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Whoever doesn't believe is condemned already. Can you see the consistency? And this is what the apostles are preaching. If Daddy Freeze was a genuine man of God, as he claimed that God gave him his message, he can never be preaching this devilish message that contradicts Christ, contradicts John, contradicts Paul, contradicts Peter. 
We are talking about credible witnesses, people who knew and walked with Christ. You can see that no one of them has said anything about giving to the poor to be saved. It tells you what spirit animates people like that. Freeze. I pray for his soul. He doesn't know he's leading so many people to their destruction. Now, I've told you about Peter. I've told you about uh, John. We've gone to Peter. We've also seen Paul and Silas. We saw Jesus. Let's also see what Paul preaches in his gospel. He's got that. He says, "Prove that I'm a liar." But proving for the scripture from the scriptures. We are proving from both the red. We are proving from both the red and the black Bibles. Romans 10:9. What does it say? If you declare with your mouth, "Jesus is Lord," and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Anything from the poor? About the poor? The thief on the cross when he was there, all he just said was. Have mercy on me. So I, no, he said, ah, we did wrong. But this man did nothing wrong. Remember me in your father's kingdom. He expressed faith, not just towards an essence. As the likes of Jiga would try to mislead a lot of people. See, the essence, essence. He expressed, expressed faith in a personality. In a person. It's important that if you come to know the person of Jesus Christ, not just an essence. And that's what that thief did on the cross. He expressed his faith, not towards an essence, but towards a person. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. I like the way the, let's, the New International Version says, By grace, it is, for it is by grace you have been saved. Through faith, this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. Now, if a person can give to the poor to be saved, then how is it a gift of God? Brethren, think about it. If I don't know Christ, I don't believe in Christ, I don't believe in his salvific work, and I just give to the poor, and I'm saved. Then how is it a gift? It's not a gift because it's my effort. I worked for it. That's why the Bible says it is a gift lest no one should boast. I love the way the Amplified puts it. It says for it is by free grace God's unmerited favor that ye are saved delivered from judgment and made particulars of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, of your own doing. It came not through your own striving but it is a gift from God. How clearer can this be, brethren? So, brethren, I mean, it is very evident. We don't need to look further. That the freeze is misleading a lot of souls. He's sending them to hell. What's so painful about this whole thing is that he's denying sinners salvation. People don't see the gravity of what this man is doing. He doesn't even see his own, the gravity of what he's doing because he's deceived himself and he's deceived no one. But let's pray for him. Let's pray for Jiga. Let's pray for his followers. Because at the end of the day, that the freeze has trampled on the, upon the blood of Christ. And he has told people that indirectly or directly that they don't need Christ to be saved. That if they give to the poor, they are going to make that same heaven without the blood of Christ. Yet Christ said he is the door. Anybody that tries to go through another way is a thief and a robber. There's only one way to God and that's Christ. So brethren, we know now what it is to have eternal life. Eternal life doesn't come from your works. Jesus said it. That the priest even read it. He said, it is the spirit that gives eternal life. Human efforts, what? Accomplishes nothing. That is the Red Bible. So that the priest cannot argue that. And Paul corroborates that when he says, it is by grace you are saved through your faith in Christ. It is not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. So I want to give this opportunity here to just pray with certain people. If you've been deceived by Daddy Freeze, I want to invite you to come to know the living water who is Christ. And I want to pray with you before I open up the lines, before I open up, um, you know, Brother Ross, Russell and um, Raphael may want to say one thing and I'll open up the lines. I want to pray with you. Do not be deceived to think that you can be saved by yourself. It doesn't matter. Christ is not about religion. Oh, uh, oh, are you saying one billion Hindus, one billion Muslims will be saved? You are deceived because you think God is a God of sentiments. God doesn't, un God doesn't recognize Muslim. He doesn't recognize Christian. He doesn't recognize a a Hindus. He doesn't recognize atheists. He doesn't recognize free thinkers. He doesn't even recognize Christians. What he sees are sinners. Call yourself what you want. You are a sinner. It doesn't matter whether you are a Christian, you are a Muslim, you are, you are a pagan. You are a sinner. No amount of righteous deeds can end your salvation because even our most righteous works as filthy rags before God. God looked at us. He considered a helpless estate and shed his blood for our own sins. He shed his blood for our own sins. He shed his blood. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast save in the death of Christ my Lord. 
all the even things that jam me most I sacrifice them to his blood I sacrifice them to his blood every form of your righteousness is not by yourself not by your works sacrifice your righteousness to his blood throw yourself to the mercy of Christ acknowledge what he's done for you it's enough that is why it's a gift it is a gift of eternal life and that gift simply comes by believing in Christ and what he's accomplished so I want to pray with you if you're here with us today you have not received Christ as your Lord and your Savior you have not believed in him and you have heard this gospel I want to pray just accept him just tell him in your own way Lord I receive you as my Lord today. I recognize what you have done for me on the cross. And I want to yield to you. Save me, Lord, through your atoning grace. I have accepted that atoning blood. I really re- I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the Son of God. The Bible says what? If you believe in the Lord Jesus and confess him, you shall be saved. It's as easy as that. So I want to pray with you. If you believe that, then... You can be welcomed into the kingdom of God. It's not your efforts. Then you can do good works. Because Christ expects us to express that light of Christ. So if you've said yes to this call, Father Lord, I want to thank those who have received this gospel. I don't know who will be listening to this now or who will be listening to this later. But as your spirit draws, because we know that we can't come to you even except you draw us first. I pray your spirit to use this gospel and message to draw people to you, Father. Draw people to your Son. Draw them to your Son. That you may give them that faith, that grace to come to you, that they may believe in your finished works. It, that it will not be by their own strength, but by, their, but by what you have done. So I want to pray for them. And that you keep them. And that you keep them away from false doctrines that will deceive them and teach them that they can be saved by themselves. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name. I just want to sing this song one more time and then I'll put up the light. When I surveyed the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. Hmm. My richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. For be it, Lord, that I should boast not in my works, Lord, saving the death of Christ my Lord all the even things that charm me most I sacrifice Lord I sacrifice I sacrifice them to your blood Thank you, Jesus. Thank you all. God bless you. Russell, Raphael, wow. Please let me have your further contributions and let's open the lines for people who may want to contribute or say anything. Sorry, I've not been reading the comments. I've been so caught up in the moment of God's spirit and his teachings and his grace. So any any further contributions anything if i've not if there's anything i've not done it justice to or if there's anything you want to add to it scriptures that also came to mind or anything you know feel free to contribute and then i want to also see how i can make this um, open up the lines for people who might want, who want to call and then we can call it a day so rafael and russell anything to add Yeah, it's uh, not much to add. Really, you know. 
Where's well, Russell? Uh, Has Russell uh, gone? We can't see Russell again. Uh, is he there? Yeah, I think uh, Russell is not there now. Okay, no problem. Maybe so he has the point to... is that uh, the Bible said in uh, Romans chapter eight, verse nine, it says that. Uh, let, I think let me see quickly that. So we should we should also let that the freeze know this, you know that uh, the spirit of God is very important. Because without the Spirit of God, we are none of His. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Hmm. If so be that the Spirit of, of God dwell in you now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, hmm. he is none of His. Wow. So that uh, is gospel of only good to the poor. You know, no matter how every religion, all the nations of the world shall be gathered, and then it will be judged by only those that have given to the poor. It's a total error. It's a total error. Because there are those that do not even believe in the Spirit of God, that do not have the Spirit of God. So that is why. That is why when he's reading the book of Acts chapter 10, he doesn't understand it at all. Because if you understand it, you will know that the essence of you know, God revealing to, you know, Cornelius that mm. he needed to hear the word of God yes. was because he needed to receive the Holy Spirit. That's right. You know, That's he needed right. to hear the word of God and know, you know, the, 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 the importance of salvation and that salvation cannot be complete without the Holy Spirit. Mm. And that is why when Paul came and met some, some of those that believed in Acts chapter 19, he told them, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Since you believed yep. So the, the, the importance of the Holy Spirit have been completely downplayed or completely, you know, removed from the gospel that, that the freeze is preaching. That's true. That is he's not talking about the Spirit of God at all. Yeah, all his essence is about giving to the poor, giving mm. to the poor. Mm -hmm. but that's not the total gospel. That's not the total gospel. That's true. That's true. true. Very spot on, mm -hmm. Brother Raphael, because uh, this, this scripture, that scripture I just read said, he that doesn't have the spirit of God is none of his. I mean, so none clear. How do you, how do you, 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 and you don't get the spirit, the spirit by giving to the poor. You get the spirit of God by believing in the gospel. You yeah. see? So there's no, there's no other way around it. That if he cannot wrap himself, because if you, if, you are none of God's own. You're not concerned God, if, without the Spirit of God. If you don't have the Spirit, you're none of His. Then how do you say atheists, Buddhists, Shintos, Muslims, people who don't that's just, I mean, come on. Is that, that is more evident. It's more evidence to show that the freeze himself needs to receive the Holy Spirit. Yes. He needs to submit himself to the Lord Jesus Christ. Very because true. He, he doesn't yet have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because if he has the Holy Spirit, he will understand the, what the Holy Spirit does in the life of a believer. True. Because he cannot just, uh, you know, it's not concussion. Believing in Christ is not concussion. Anywhere, any, anything, just join. Mm. Anybody, just come. Yep. Uh, any harm. No. Yes, God calls everyone to himself. And when he calls everyone to himself, when they come, he gives them his spirit. Because the Spirit of God is a seal. The Spirit of God is a seal. True. So that if you should understand the scripture and stop, uh, you know, this is a, a world, uh, this new world order. Yes, a, a ecumenical gospel. gospel, trying to unite, no. have created his own, he's creating his own religion. That's just basically the whole, the truth. He's creating his religion no. based on works. So he's going to get a lot of people who don't regard Christ, whether they are Shintos, Buddhists, Muslims, atheists, even Chris Lamb, who that practice hybrid religion. Those are the people that feel his that free nation cult that he's running. And they are, this is the gospel they are saying they should take around the world. So you can imagine what the devil seeks to achieve by taking this kind of gospel around the world to tell people that, you know, they can end their eternal life is something that you earn by doing works of charity to the poor. I mean, that's really very sad, you know. Yeah. Uh, we'll that's why in his kind of gospel, everybody feels so much at home. Somebody like this, Jeffrey Lewis, Jeffrey Lewis will, will feel very much at home when Daddy Freeze is teaching. Okay. He, wouldn't, he, wouldn't be, he wouldn't be on uh, Daddy Freeze's uh, message and be making all this kind of comment that the Bible is a fake book. 
that the Christianity is a fake bit, you know. So these people like this, people like all these I think this will feel very much at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're very correct. Those are the kind of people that like uh, Daddy Freeze because as long as they don't preach Christ and the Bible, they're happy to be their own God and create their own religion. Yeah, you're really right. I've not been listening to what yeah, what he's been saying, but you're very spot on. Those are the kind of people that really enjoy Daddy Freeze's platform. You know, that is why mm -hmm. you found out that when Daddy Freeze went to open that WhatsApp group. I've said this before. I want to say it again. Didn't you notice that he said atheists took over that, took over the WhatsApp group? You see, they took off over the WhatsApp group and were even arguing Bible with him. That was they locked himself and they locked him out of the group. Why will if you if the hello? Okay, I thought I was lost. If the spirit of God yeah, I hear you. If the spirit of God is and moving a person. Why would that attract atheists to your platform who are not giving their lives to Christ but are trying to get Christ out of your platform? Does it not show that the spirit that is that goes with you is not of God? You see that? So the, your, your message is attracting atheists and these atheists are trying to get Christ out of your platform. So that to, shows you that that spirit that you're going with is not from God. But he said, but Daddy Freeze will not see all these things. And Daddy Freeze even said it himself that, how do you know something is not from God if what you've said doesn't line with the scriptures? It's not from God. I, we just showed. I wonder what happened to Russell. It's painful that he's not here because I'm sure he'd have want, had one or two things to say. Maybe he needs to attend to one or two things. Anyway, we've shown Jesus' clear statements are told about eternal life. We showed from Paul. He said, prove me wrong. Prove me a liar. We showed from John himself. We showed from Peter. The jailer asked, what, what can I do to be saved? This, was, this is a clear statement. Salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And my challenge to Daddy Freeze, and don't forget that challenge, for those that are Daddy Freeze's followers, go back to him. My challenge, ask him, can you show me one minister of the gospel in the New Testament, any of Christ's disciples, apostles that taught that salvation comes through works, through giving to the poor. Just one. And, the, and of course, you see, why we had to address Jiga? Because Jiga was trying to use James to support with Rahab to support his point. But we see that James was not in any way negating faith. James was simply saying a person is not saved by faith alone. So that, that's telling you that, oh, there's, there should be faith first, but then your works should justify that faith. That's why Jesus said, not all who say, Lord, Lord. You see? shall enter the kingdom of God. So yes, that Lord, Lord is a prerequisite first. You need to first acknowledge him as Lord, but then you have to do the will of his father. You see that? So, but what them Jiga, and, and they say, it's a revelation. You heard them, it's deep. I am Jiga, we spoke deep. so deep. And he's just been looking at this. And you saw how they were even mocking that other girl to say, oh, she does it. I just look at them. They are so confident in, their, in, the, in the ignorance of their error. Say, with the revelation, we sat down, we discussed these things. Say Rahab didn't have faith, but you just saw Paul show that she had faith, clearly contradicting what Jiga said. But James was trying to say that Rahab's faith was justified by her works. So, brethren, anyone wants to call? So we could, if not, we we'll just. Rafael, yeah. I want to say something. No, no, no. If anyone wants to call, I think the number is there. If yeah. there's no caller, I think yes, the number is there. Yeah, we can just. Um, the Lord. We, we can just. Call. Yes, um, we just. Um, we just pray and then. Call it a night. Oh, maybe the comment not coming in. Let's see. Is there any comments? Yeah, let's no. see the comments. Raphael, see if you can, because I can't really scroll. Okay, and then I want to just say something about this. Okay, Louis. The question is that, okay, let me ask um, this Louis if you're here. What do you intend to achieve? And, you know, with due respect, okay, you already know that this is a Christian forum. The people are believe, who are uh, discussing this are Bible-believing Christians. You come into a platform and then just start saying the Bible is fake, is this and that. You're disrespectful. You're trying to disrespect people who you already know, okay, they believe, this is what they believe. No matter how you shout from now to tomorrow that the Bible is a fake book, it's not going to change anything. All right. So why why come into a platform where you know that there are Christians here who who revere and adore Jesus, who revere, revere you know, who 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 are like actually revere the gospel? Why come in here to begin to make this kind of comments? Do you understand? It's not it's not it's not really nece it's not necessary. Okay, it's not at all. Okay. So um, <laughs> okay. I'm,
I'm trying to see if I can see some comments. Um, yeah, righteousness. I got that said. Righteousness. The difference is not preaching the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Raphael, Raphael, just mute a little bit. It should be until you want to speak because that, that sound is very loud. I'm hearing myself echo. Oh, thank you. God bless you, bro. Um, um, uh, Oluwa Yomi said, may, your, may our eyes of understanding be opened. The Bible in its entirety is God's book. And, and without spiritually designing it, we will just go into error. People have itching ears and they have made past, pastors for themselves. That's really true. Okay. Um, Peter said, I don't used to get notification on OJ Guamu live program. Hmm. That's strange. Peter, so, okay, I think one of the ways to help you is that if you, if you click on follow, if you follow me on, on Facebook and click on follow, that's one of the easiest way to always get notifications when I come online or I have a live broadcast. Because I notice that sometimes, even if you're just friends with somebody, you know, I don't really know what happens. You may not come, come you may not get notification. So if you follow, if you if you really like my broadcasts and uh, the the messages, um, you know we share here, you could just uh, click on the follow button, and I'm sure it would um, notify you um, anytime we are on. Okay. Um, Yabiji said um, he stylish he's he's stylishly supporting evil. Exactly. Um, um, Christie Otutu said, ha ha ha. My in-law, you people should have corrected him or that the freeze made too many errors. No, see, my sister, the truth about it is that the freeze doesn't accept corrections. You need to understand the kind of person that the freeze is. That freeze is omniscient. He knows everything, it all. Didn't you, someone that has told you that my message is from God and it's not subject to scrutiny, correct, correct, K. I will block you. Uh, it's not debatable. If you call me, I will block you. Is that the person you want to go and correct? <laughs> My sister, you don't understand. See, Daddy Freeze doesn't take correction. He doesn't. Do you understand? He's he's that is he doesn't listen to. He's omniscient. He knows it all. You know. But I'm praying that somewhere along the line, God will use this message to reach out to him, Jiga, and many of these those people he's misleading. So, but yeah, point noted. Um, who else again? NZ said i don't understand um what do they mean by essence of jesus <laughs> and that's a good question let me let me explain that uh, now oh it's a, i wish i haven't saw some of these comments since um Enzi, when they say essence of jesus let me not tell you what they mean you see do you understand what the devil wants to do here so essence of jesus they say things like jesus said i am the way the truth and the life so even if you don't, you see, Jesus is the way. You see, he's the way. So if you follow his ways, you are following Jesus. You see that? He's the truth. So if you if you follow truth, like you said, some Adela Javon says sometimes, and you're a lover of truth, you, you may not even know Jesus, you may not even believe in him, but you are a lover of truth, you're just a lover of truth, you are following Jesus. You understand? So when they say essence, these are the kind of things they mean by essence. They want to strip that personality. They want to get rid of that image and make Christ an essence. So that they can create a false religion where people can say, oh yeah, do you know Christ? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 where Christ is the essence. I follow the essence. So even if that person doesn't believe in what Christ has done on the cross, doesn't believe that he died, he resurrected, he's the atonement for sin. They have their own Christ they are following, who is essence. So, S NZ, that's what they mean by essence. They are following, you know, follow his the essence. Yes, you have to follow Christ and his essence. So, the essence is not divorced from the person. They are one. You can't divorce them. You have a chair. You have a chair. You have <laughs> now, now Isha, native doctor. <laughs> Yavage, this is Yavage's mother. I don't know where she gets all these things from. He said, Isha, native doctor. <laughs> Yavage, your, this your mouth is not good. <laughs> okay, let's see some more comments. What did um, <laughs> Phil Omokao said? I have always known him. The beginning that the soul that the freeze is 
is, is possessed with the spirit of deception and witchcraft. It's a pity that many so-called Christians who lack the true knowledge of, this, of the scripture have fallen into his deception, demonic deception. Yeah, it's, it's really very sad. Very, very sad. Yeah, Adalbi is replying to Enzi and says that they are saying that for salvation, Jesus should be removed from the equation. Rather, we should, we should push the gospel essence yeah, of love and try to project to the world. Exactly. This is exactly what they are saying. So in other words, what did Christ teach? Christ taught, taught, uh, you know, taught love. So if you practice love, you are already following his essence. So you don't need to believe in the image, his personality. You don't need to really... You see, like that uh, guy on the cross, the man that said, remember me. So he threw himself at the mercy of a person. He didn't say essence. He said, remember me. So you cannot express, express faith towards an essence. <laughs> you express faith towards God, through Christ. Okay? Let me see. I was going to do something before we close. Any any other thing? Let me just read some more comments and um, and then we'll probably call it a day. Let's just read. Um... I feel or oh, mock out said I have always okay I think I've read that before um, Harry Jones said New King James by faith the harlot Rahab did not perish with those yes when she had received the spies so Paul said it was by faith so she expressed faith I've um, apt feel or mock out said the young man that frees needs deliverance and that's the truth yeah I agree um, but let's keep praying for him um, let's pray that um, he will really come to the knowledge of God. Abashi Jimo said um, Lobatan, message is not up for scrutiny. <laughs> Dictatorial preaching. Jesus entertained questions. Exactly. And allow people to ask him questions. Rafa, can you hear me now? Oh, he can't hear me. He can't still hear me. Um, he said um, thus the woman thus the, the, the man or woman who does not want to be questioned should be avoided. Spot on. I agree. I agree. Exactly. You know? Bashi, you're so spot on. Okay, I'm just uh, trying to see if I can um, call Raphael again because he's, he's not, um, apparently he's not hearing. And then we'll just, um, just round up. Very, very spot on. I agree with you, uh, Bashi, that um, the one who is... Um, if you say that, um, I mean, you cannot be questioned, then nobody should listen to you. I mean, people should not listen to you if um, that's your disposition towards, um, you know, towards, um, towards the gospel. That you say you're preaching and then you believe that you're the only person who has monopoly of that gospel and that nobody should question you nobody should challenge you nobody should de nobody can uh, debate you nobody can i mean come on that's it that's a court right there really yeah that's so spot on okay um i think i lost Raphael. i'll just bring him back and then we can probably pray if we're not going to get any calls uh <clears throat> okay Raphael is still there i think i was the one who went out to see if I could go go back in. See if I can join the call. Okay. Sorry guys, I'm just trying to get back into my call with Raphael. I lost them. Okay. Okay. Uh, Russell sent a message and said at the 39 minute mark. Um, okay. What else? Freeze needs to go and apologize to Daddy Adeboye. <laughs> yes, uh, probably he needs to. Because, I mean, if you're preaching that. Um, they should not you should not go back to works. So Matthew twenty twenty three is something of the um like old testament or something like that. Uh, you they can't use it then. On what basis then do you um Raphael, can you hear me now? You're mute. I 
I can't now. I can't hear Raphael. <laughs> He's, now I can hear you. I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fine. I have to go out and come back in again. So I did you hear what that Bashi dream about what our brother uh, Bashi, Bashi said that um, maybe I don't think did you hear what he said about um, not enter entertaining questions? That's so spot on. I don't know if I read it, but I don't think you. Yeah. 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 I. I yeah. I read it. You heard. I heard when you read that. Oh, see yeah. our see our cute cutie cutie daughter there. Um, 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 Russell is back with his lovely daughter. Russell, I knew you had to probably attend to certain things, so I know I know you had already told me. In fact, I was going to uh, warn them ahead of time to say, please, if if Russell should disappear, please know, you know how they put that um, um uh, baby seat in the car when you're driving, they'll say baby on board, daughter on board. So yeah. if you have some distractions, just take it. And I, I was also stalling and waiting for a while because I didn't want us to end without you, just in case you wanted some comment. I wanted to just come and uh, make some comments before we go. Apparently, I don't think anybody wants to call. Um, I think I think it's very it's clear. I'll, we are just reading some comments. So do if you have anything to say, um, I think I've read Agada's comment. Um, all right. We're waiting on you, Russell. If you have anything to add, so that we can just so, round up. I, I, can, I would. It would be unjust for me to even because I did. I was able to hear um, for the like the last thirty minutes. So anything I say, you probably have already said it. So I'll go back and I'll go back and listen to the broadcast one more time, and then any comments I can just type it in there or yeah. Okay, all right, no problem. So we're still just reading comments. Uh, Gatha said, like, seriously, the Bible is the only book that teaches us the way to God, but we must rightly divide the word of truth. Exactly. Please don't bring confusion on this platform. Blessings. And as she's replying to Jeffrey, exactly, Jeffrey, um, I'm tempted to block him, but I think I'll just leave him for now. But I, I would expect you to use your discretion to respect the convictions of people on the platform. You don't come in here and just begin to just say anything because you want to discredit it. Do you understand? Um, this is not the this is not the, this is not the um, room for that. We are addressing a specific issue amongst Christians. So it's very evident that the people here are Christians. So at least show some form of um, be cultured and show some form of decorum. Motunrayo, ah, when did Motunrayo join us? Has he been here with us, Motunrayo? Has he been here no, with Motunrayo us? Came in late. Okay. Came in late. Uh -huh. Okay, so, oh, I have just joined and do not know what you guys have covered so far. I don't want to jump in. Ah, oh, Motunrayo, why? Ah, oh, Motunrayo missed. I'm sure you missed, but don't worry. There's always a uh, chance to go back. You can always watch it. He said, um, Motunrayo also said, I heard the beat about Rehab, though. I baffled uh, <laughs> I'm trying to scroll and his, um, some parts are freezing. Let me see if I can get back to what he was saying. Uh, did I miss something? Okay. Uh, Phil said, that's a great point by Raphael. Giving to the poor without loving Christ is useless. Exactly. Arrogant Koara. That's a Yabeji. Agatha said, the knowledge of the scriptures means nothing if you don't have a heart for Jesus. Spot on Agatha. Um, Agatha said that the freeze doesn't want to be corrected by anyone. And anybody who is above correction is heading for destruction. Spot on, that's true. Russell, uh, Raphael, that your um, Raphael, that your echo, echo is coming, is coming again. He says, uh, "What is there? Someone say here? We're rounding up now, so I'm just reading the comments." Harry Jones said, "Freeze! They watch this broadcast secretly." <laughs> well, I pray he's watching so that I mean he will give it a thought. I know they are supposed to have their. Um, I think he said they are supposed to have their first service in Dubai. They are supposed to be in Dubai now. I think they are supposed to have their first, I think they said a live service in the morning. I don't really know. So, but hopefully, I pray they watch. Um, I'm not even going to read any of uh, this Jeffrey Lewis comment, you know. And if he's still going to make comment, I think I'll just block him permanently from this platform since he doesn't know how to respect um talk with respect when he gets into a platform um so <laughs> harry jones said terrorists don't they arrive this broadcast much more uh, adabi said sing it brother 
OJ Sing. Okay. <laughs> All right. What else? He said we need the keyboards <laughs> to please. Okay. Don't worry. Maybe next time I'll, I'll bring the keyboard. You know, some of these things are spontaneous. You don't plan for them. You better raise your hands to, to now to give your life to Jesus. Yes, people give your life to Jesus. It's the only way. Give blessings all. Yeah. So Motunaya said, Harry Jones said, and he wants to correct others. Nonsense. That's freeze. Freeze doesn't want to take correction, but he wants to correct others. That's true. Exactly. Now, wow, I've never heard that one. No. Enzi, I wish I knew what Enzi was talking. Okay, is it the Essence one? Maybe it's the Essence one. Is that the essence one that says she has yeah, never? The essence one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the essence. <laughs> so she's never heard that one. <laughs> well, uh, NZ, trust me, there are strange things. The Bible says in latter days, a lot of people will be given to uh, seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. We see them. We see them. There are many. Uh -huh. God bless you all. We can hear now. Yeah, we can hear. I think I was back. Volume is back. Now, what did um, Oluwano Oluwa Mayowa said? Well, like, if you preach the truth, you wouldn't be avoiding scrutiny. Exactly. Oh, ah, it's an informed comment. If you carry the truth, you'll be glad to receive scrutiny. Oh, ah, I wish I could just bless this um, this, uh, this brother, you know, 20 times. Receive my likes. That is the truth. And that's why Jesus was not afraid to have he, those people come to tempt him, to trick him, to ask him questions. So he responded to them. The same thing with Stephen. But notice that the priest will never allow that. He knows he will never allow people come face to face with him to confront him on his doctrines. He will evade it by ten, telling them that they are chasing clout. He's too big for them. I have 250,000 on Twitter. I have 300,000 on Facebook. That is what he does. He uses that to evade it. He's very quick. He runs away from any form of confrontation. And if you're, if you're, true, because if you're preaching the truth, you'll be confident to say, uh, yes, I want. I can. The apostles they debated in the marketplaces. Some people challenged them. Why can't Daddy Freeze come out for people to question him? He will never do that because he's running a cult. He wants to be the cult leader that people look up to. He wants to base his religion on his personality and what he claims God has given him without anybody putting to checks. He doesn't even know that people who call him out to put checks on him. Are doing that for his own good, but rather he will come back and insult them. Watch now, when that priest probably makes a video next time, he's going to start insulting us. <laughs> Same thing he's going to do. That's exactly what I wanted to say now. Because <laughs> the next time he will keep me calm now, he will just be calling names and yes, insulting. Yeah, insulting. Uh, yeah, those dig bats, yeah. those clowns, those morons. You know, but you know, but you know, it's all good. At the end of the day. There's a, there's a seed that has been sown. He can't run away from the word. If it's, you know, and the people who are under him. I'm even very, very concerned too about those godly people who follow him. But I pray that God will give them light. Anyway, I think time has been far spent. I think Russell is busy as well. So we, we understand that he may not be able to um, uh, finish this with us. But um, so I think, um, Raphael, I think we can call it a night. What do you think? Because um, apparently... Um, I think we've read all the comments. Nobody's calling, uh, and um, over, over <laughs> two hours, thirty minutes. Yes, yeah, so that's that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. All right. So I think we can pray now. Let's uh, wrap it up and just pray. I'd uh, uh, love love there Russell to pray for us, but he's busy. But Raphael, Russell, so, yes, Russell, where are you? If you can hear us, come and pray. Yeah, but I guess maybe he had to mute it because of his uh, daughter as well. I I, I think um. Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe he doesn't really want. Maybe she's crying or something. He doesn't really want her to uh, be on the bus. But Raphael is okay. You can, you can, you can pray for us, and then we can just call it a night. Uh, yeah, we thank God. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for giving us another opportunity to share from the scriptures, because uh, the Bible says that. Um, the word of God is given for reproof, for correction in righteousness. Amen. Father, we thank you because the essence of this subject tonight is to correct all the errors that uh, Brother Freeze have put out there in relation to the redemption and the eternal life and our eternal salvation. Father, I pray that he himself will get the correction, that those that have been misled will understand better that Man. you, this 
you didn't save us only because we give to the poor. You save us because we accepted the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ That's right. and uh, the Holy Spirit within us. And I pray, O oh God, that he will not fight this, but that he will surrender to the truth because the truth is bigger than every one of us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because this has been put out from the spirit of love and the, the unity and the bond of peace in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I pray that this will also return those, oh God, that have lost it back to the faith and back to this fold in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, because you. you know you have taken control and uh, let this continue to be, oh God, the message that every one of us will uphold in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And amen. Thank you very much, uh, Brother. Um, uh, Brother uh, Ralph, thanks for everything. Thanks for um, also contributing, being a soldier as well in the faith. I mean, you've been a blessing to to us as well. So I want to thank God for your life. And um, I pray that God will mm -hmm. continually strengthen you. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, we always look forward to your edifying um, broadcast as well. You know, it's a fight. I want to seize this opportunity to also give a shout to fellow soldiers before we go i was going to do that at the beginning and a lot of people who are at least lending their voices you know i've just mentioned rafael he's at the forefront as well contending for the faith we've been called to contend for the faith that once was delivered to the saints because of false teachers have crept in unawares rafael well done i likes of a summer aku if you ever watch this too i want to i want to also um give you a uh, salute to you for your efforts coin out charlatans for your struggle for the fight for truth there are people like osagists you know a lot of women too are there at the forefront you know people like coco mama you know people like sister is in there she's always posting exposing charlatans you know having shalom shalom you know not everybody comes out to do a broadcast but they are lending their voice in one way or the other so i want to thank you all and i want to bless god for all of you you know it's a collective effort um, God, you, you hear a lot of people saying, oh, God can fix the church. Don't try to fight for God. God can fix the church. I now tell them, eh, when I hear people say that, I tell them, I said, have you ever seen any ch time that God shook his head out from the sky to start shouting, this thing you are doing is not good. Oh. This thing you are doing is not good. Oh. <laughs> have you ever seen any time that God brought out his head to start fixing? He always uses men. <laughs> yeah. He always sends people. But these people are so ignorant. They say, God can fix it. You don't fight for God. He can fix it. With time. Yeah. And I tell them, they are enjoying the benefits of the Reformation now because they mm -hmm. don't know that Martin Luther did exactly the same thing we are doing against the false religious system of their day. But they are not, they are not enjoying. If not, who knows? If not for God using them, they would have still been going to do Eucharist with Catholic now doing Domino, Domino, have mercy on us, the blood and Jesus, way far and all. They would have still been in Catholic Church. But there was a reformation that brought about what we are enjoying. It was God that spearheaded it. Yeah, he used yeah. men. He does not bring out his head from his sky to fix the church. He always uses men. All right. Anyway, mm -hmm. let me not preach another gospel. <laughs> so, brethren, thank you very much for your time. I want to say God bless you. We love you. Thank you for, um, you know, a lot of people have stayed even to the end, you know. So I want to thank you and um, uh, we bless you. We pray for you that uh, God will continually uphold you all. Um, and that um, his blessings, his favor, his grace will continually be with you. Um, I and my brother will be signing out now. Have a blessed night, afternoon, morning, wherever you are. One love from all of us. And um, remain blessed. We'll meet again. We'll let you know what our next uh, coming broadcast will be. So, Raphael, let's say bye to them. So, God bless you. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful time. Love you all. We love you. Bye-bye. God bless you. Bye-bye.